what's going on, nigga? Yeah, oh, bro. Yeah. Sturdy. Lobby boys! Nigga. Yeah. Chat. Don't make me make me fly. Huh. Pull up with one of the guys. Ooh. And I'm hoping he won't be surprised. When I pull up the one of his side, don't make me fly. And I'm hoping I catch him on lock. And it's only a matter of time. Pull me out his mind. Don't make me fly. Huh. Don't make me fly. Don't make me fly. Don't make me fly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The money and power know that the city is ours. Spinning again, pull up with killers and robbers. Get your little homies devoured. Hey, energy, energy, energy. I got that right type of energy. Hold on, let's take a little time out. Shout out to all of my enemies. I ain't no regular rap nigga. They know I live what I rap nigga. Showed up in front of your girl house. She the one told you I'm that nigga. It never mattered with that cost. Not even showing the back car. Most of my homies is inmates. Most of my women is escorts. Oh, like it or love it. They call me kissing a model in public. I'm on a hundred. Hurry, said nigga, you're bugging. You only live once, so it's fucking. Hey. They see me, how about the coupe? All of this jury, I'm cute. Uh, I am the truth. The rollie is yellow, the diamonds is blue. Don't make, hey. don't make me slide. Huh. Pull up with one of the guys. And I'm hoping he won't be surprised. When I pull up the one on his side, don't make me slide. And I'm hoping I catch him on live. And it's only a matter of time. So pull me out of his mind. Don't make me slide. Hey. Huh. Don't make hey, me slide. So hey. Huh. Let's go, Gil. Hey, 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 Lobby, Lobby, Lobby boys. Bang, now I'm trade. That's really my gang. Back, back, we going side to side. Everybody know we outside. Slide. Put the niggas out in Bucktown I'ma get money nigga from Uptown Got bullets with me when I touch down yeah. Fuck around Y'all gonna make me start upping it Since the baby been tucking it Water on, I ain't tucking shit Respectfully Respectfully, you can suck a dick And whatever gonna come with it Niggas know I get done with it 50 shots, that's a drum with it Hit your block and let the gun whip it Tell a cop he can fuck his ticket Tell your bitch she can suck and lick it It's lit It's mad as fact, it's up uh, uh, Back to back and back trucks Trucks Catch him in the wrong house uh, Get his ass back Don't make me make me Slide, slide. Huh. I gotta stop this bitch I live in Soho Yeah, in yeah Lobby boys, man Hey mm -hmm. Lobby boys is in the building mm -hmm. You're now mm -hmm. tuned in to Me, 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 me Million dollars worth of game We gonna get straight to this New yeah. York City is in the building Yeah Harlem is in the building yeah. Brooklyn is in the building, man It's going down, man Listen, man We got some season I'm talking about some season I'm talking about some season hustlers right here, man They've been in the game, man. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about getting bag, yeah. getting the bag over here, getting the bag over here. <laughs> a lot of a lot of dudes out here say they hustlers, but they don't hustle. Mm -hmm. See, that's the whole thing. Yeah, I'm a hustler. No, the package. Get locked up, get killed. The dope still gonna move. Mm. But when you're a hustler, you gonna hustle. Mm. It's, it's all about the body language. It's about how you move in and out the building. Mm. Can you go in there and get the bag from over here? Bag from over here. Bag from over here. Bag. Just bagging it down. Mm -hmm. bagging well, it I'm down. remixing the name. Taking the lobby boys, the bag boys. <laughs> just getting bags. I'm, I'm just being real. Dudes have been getting bags in real time. Just getting different bags. Look at them. I'm talking about getting big old bag right there. Look at the knockout. Little bag. Look at it. <laughs> That's a knockout bag. Look at this Jimmy shit. Jimmy said he's going to knock you out. Yeah, 100%. We, we got that gasolina. <laughs> what are you talking about, LL? You heard that you hot tea. Me? We got it. Now, I'm going right into it, man. Been in the game. Getting a bunch of bags. Big songs. Both of y'all had big songs. Yeah. How do you... How do you stay motivated? Uh, motivation got to come from within. I mean, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. It's times when the game puts you in a place where you question yourself, and then, you, and, and you going up and down in your journey, you, you losing your self confidence because it's getting you confused. And we all, as artists, we all been through that because you're spinning around saying, "Damn!" As soon as you get to a point where you questioning yourself, and them voices in your head is telling you. You're doing too much of this. You're not doing enough of that. Or maybe this is not the way. Maybe not that way. Then you lose that self-confidence. You lose that supreme confidence. Then you're in a questionable situation. Motivation sometimes comes from the people closest around you. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be 100% with you, I was in a, I was in a kind of like a, 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 a funny place with the music. But when, but when we talked about doing this, this whole album together, this is supposed, we supposed to have been doing this 10 years ago. But... Ain't no greater time than the present time. But when Jim came and we and we got in the studio, it, it gave me back my motivation and it gave me back my conf my confidence. So that's you know. Listen, I I I I got this thing that I've 
that somebody told me in this, even in this past two years, but it was kind of my remedy anyway. Didn't know I was living by it. When you can't stay motivated, stay consistent. Mm. All right? Consistency going to bring back your motivation, no matter what it is. You heard? Basketball players, rappers, sanitation people, whatever it is, you dig? That consistency, staying on point, staying disciplined, staying focused, no matter on them days that's hard, mm. it's going to make the, uh, the days that you are motivated that much greater. Uh-huh. Now, hold on. Before we go any further, nigga. Yes. This motherfucking episode of me and the Hot's Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam <laughs> Damn, Vodka. vodka. <laughs> now, uh, um, now, I want to hear, hear the whole commercial. I want to hear yeah, the distillery. It. I want to hear the... You I wanna, it. I, oh, hold on, wait. I know you ain't get wait. it. So, wait, hold on. I, I Life ain't going see. your way. <laughs> Shout out to New Amsterdam <laughs> yeah. Vodka. You caught your woman sucking the dick today. <laughs> Shot in New Amsterdam Vodka. Yeah. Uh, you thought you, you was getting that wire and that bitch didn't come your way? Shot in New Amsterdam Vodka. Right, it's distilled five times. Five, five, five. It's filtered three times. Three, three, three. If you speak Spanish, that's uno, dos, oh, tres. tres. Yeah, I mean, you know, for that clean, crisp finish. You know what I'm saying? So when you're out and about at your local liquor store, make sure you pick up some New Amsterdam Vodka. It's great for pre-gaming, too. I'm talking about Yes. Baseball, <laughs> you know, basketball, the playoffs right now, your hockey, whatever sport of your choice is, you know, make sure when you when you tapping in, you, you know, you tap in, get you some New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports, and um, the presenting sponsor, of a million, million dollars worth, worth of game. game. You know, now you always, got that you, shit. You together. always know who, who the big sponsor is. You always yeah. know who's coming in with the big check. They got, they got that <laughs> shit together. They got a whole script. Look what's real. New Amsterdam yeah. vodka. Yeah. Six bottles. So, so <laughs> I'm going to say this. You got Bon Jovi. You got Metallica. You got uh, all, uh, Eric Clapton. You got Elton John. Why did that? Only in the black culture, mm-hmm. we try to limit on what... We, we, we try, to try to limit our greatness, but these dudes performing songs from 73... Right, run around, run around, performing songs from '73 and shit. Right, stadiums, merch, everything. Why is we coming to a place now? Do you think we can to a place closer in hip hop? Whereas though we gonna be able to do it forever, just right. like everybody else do it forever. Right, right. we getting there. Um, part of the issue is that the culture was very young. Twenty mm-hmm. years ago, you ain't have thirty year old rappers mm-hmm. because the culture itself wasn't old enough. Nowadays, you got. 40 plus year old fans, right? So you got to think, the average fan that was a uh, a, a Jay-Z, uh, a Life in the Death, uh, 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 in my lifetime, right? 98, 99. They was 20-something years old. They in the 40s now. They didn't stop becoming fans of the music, of the culture. So the, the, the older the culture gets, then, then it gives artists the opportunity to come in the game sometimes older. You got artists coming in the game in their 30s now. Right. Rapping, they didn't get to have that. Shout before. out to Griselda gang. Exactly, you know what I mean. Because yes, sir, back in the Buffalo. G, back so in that the conversation G, is changing. Right, back in the G, you couldn't handle niggas coming in the game. Nah, you no couldn't. Nah. Dad nah. had some. Dad had to have some type nah. of gimmick song. Yeah, that to was the it. left, to the right, yeah. to the right, some it shit like happening. that. Yeah. Like the culture wasn't old enough. Right. But to just come in like, no, nah, I'm on some rap shit right. in a time where niggas ain't on no rap shit right. and you still take off. Yeah, that was that was a hell of a, mm-hmm. a play they pulled off there. That was that. I just think that was a uh, I think it's just major the way you uh, right now. And like you said, you, you said some shit that we ain't never think about. The fan base wasn't. Oh, it was still young. right. You we couldn't did. have you couldn't. You, you, dope what he yeah. said. I mean, he's even saying that the last. That's few major. You and couldn't. I thought about it like hip hop right. wasn't old enough. It wasn't old, old enough. Jump to the mic. I, I thought about it like he's absolutely right. Hip hop wasn't old enough. We we were still young when we first started. Right. You know what I mean? But as hip hop got older, you start to see older artists still maintaining their relevance. Daddy Kane, I'm seeing all yeah. of them yeah. running around. Karras, they running around. But, but, but even but even after them, right? So as, we we, I think I would like to think that the the, the '90s era might have been our golden era. You mm-hmm. know, for us, mm-hmm. you understand? Like the hoes, the bigs, the DMX, Mob Deep, the Dipset coming in. Early uh, late nineties, early two thousands. That was the era that lasted to right, right that's, now. That's my point. The eighties mm-hmm. was the eras that got cheated. Right, right. they got they cheated. Didn't, they didn't last to the nineties. Right. Yeah. right, think about that. Big Daddy Kane and all right. them got cheated. Special got Ed cheated. and all them got cheated. Because the sound was so you know different. different. You feel right. what I'm four, saying? Nine four, nine five, the Biggie era and all that. Those are the artists. Some of the artists are still that we still see today. Right from Jay Z, Nas, uh, the Locks, uh, Nas, uh, uh, Dipset. Like we still outside. Right. 
a lot of these artists still able to compete and right. make money. That's right. In twenty twenty two, I think a lot of times with the artists too, it don't even really be the fans. It really be self confidence. That's what I was you saying. Feel yeah, what you feel what I'm saying? Hold, you got because the artists at one time when you at your pinnacle, you performing at arenas and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And then once that start to go down, you start to feel like you ain't who you was right. no more. You feel what I'm saying? So now you back to doing, you might be doing 2,000, 3,000, 1,000. You feel what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you still getting paid to do something that you love. That's right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck yeah. That's what you got in the game to do, something that you love. Damn, I would love to get paid to do something that I love. But it really be the self confidence, man. You feel like your peers looking at, oh man, that nigga doing three thousand arenas now, man. That nigga was just doing fuck all that. You gotta keep going. Fuck all that because all that's gonna do is that's gonna take a shitload of money out your motherfucking mouth, and you are gonna sit around and you are gonna waste a bunch of time that don't need to be wasted. Mm -hmm. So fuck what anybody think. I don't give a fuck. I was I was a small town killer forever. Running around Norristown, Scranton, York, Pennsylvania, all through, Jersey. All through fucking Jersey, right. the motherfucking Hoboken, and motherfucking uh, all through Delaware and all shit. I had to stay alive. Right. Shit, I wasn't, I ain't that <laughs> shit. The fuck was I going right. to do? It was either that or go fucking be, go try to get a construction fucking job with somebody that you know you try to be off the radar. <laughs> Yo, I mean, I'm over here fixing houses with my, <laughs> fuck that. I'm with me in the small towns killing them. <laughs> because it's still motherfuckers out there that want to see a nigga. You feel I mean, what I'm life, saying? Life is like this. Sometimes you, you you able to move fast. Sometimes you able to you have to move slow. Right. Right. I mean, as long as you're moving though. Yeah, right. You can't move. So fast sometimes you're in a car. You're in a car that might not be going as fast as everybody else. But but you're not walking though. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? Definitely not walking. And, and for you in the building. For real. Right? right. So you know it's it's a journey. It's ups and downs. And and like I like like I say, the only requirement is is the music to be dope. That's it, that's it. So if, if the only requirement is the music, this is not sports. Mm -mm. Where where it's physical. This is this is with the mind. This is this is energy that come from within. This ain't like this is the game different. This is not just. It's for everybody. Right. And 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 niggas be looking for the wrong shit. You know, if you if you you thirty five, you forty, you shouldn't be. Expecting no nigga that's eighteen to be right. bumping you. He look at you like you was fucking pop. It's my fucking. There ain't no nigga don't, don't ride around listen to the right. pops. But it's a shitload of 35, right. 30, 40, 50 right. year old niggas on planet Earth that's gonna love to ride around. All you gotta do is service them and be consistent. And I was talking to Kiss one time. I was riding in the car talking to Kiss. I'm like, Yo, bro, you know what happened a lot of times? And I was talking. He was like, You right, low. I said, your era abandoned a fan base. I said, bro, I went to a Griselda show, Sony Hall, right? I go to the show, right? West side of them come on stage. I'm like, damn, look at all these niggas in here. All these niggas, truck drivers, police officers, insurance men, mm. all type of niggas that was abandoned, just forgot about. All, we, all they could do is go listen to the old shit, but everybody forgot. Everybody was in this joint, late 30s, 40s. Motherfuckers, mm -hmm. I'm talking about there was an army of niggas in there, man. Right. I'm like, dudes that got real jobs working for the city at the docks and all that shit. I'm Hold talking on. about totally a band. It's, these nut ass niggas is in Harlem right now on all the bikes. That's your man Meek right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at it. Them niggas outside going crazy. They in they the middle of Harlem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> look at them. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So my whole thing is they snapping. I'm coming back to Harlem in a second. I'll see y'all in a minute. Listen, so 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 what I'm saying is motherfuckers, I'll be motherfuckers I'll be right back. Totally, they totally abandoned yeah. all these motherfuckers because but, nobody was coming out to service them. I'll be right back. But, but those, I'll be right back. Yeah. Those was the fans. Uh, that, those are the fans that I was saying was in their twenties in the late nineties. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. them. Yes. Yep. Right. So that's what I'm saying. When you talk, think about the time and in the, in the age the age point, right? That same fan that you're talking about that right now is going to the Griselda shows. He was he was he was listening to DMX yes. at the same at the same time. So the, the fan base got older. They didn't stop loving the music. Yeah. Right. They yes. love it. And then listen, there's a fan for everybody. When you it, it's like when you it's a variety. When you walk in the sneaker store. Every sneaker don't apply to you. 
Bro. If you don't fuck with it, don't fuck with it, nigga. Right. It's okay. Right. Shit, push your T my age. He just had a number one album. Mm-hmm. What we talking about? Number one on the billboard. What we talking about? Not Apple so, on the billboard chart. What we talking about? You feel so, what I'm saying? So, so it's so. like, I just look at it like this. It, it's like. This shit hitting too, Jim. I ain't going to lie. Oh, he said that. He said you this was going to This shit hitting like Arnold Schwarzenegger at 86. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This shit strong as shit, yeah. <laughs> so, so listen. So listen. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's just an army of people out there that need to be serviced. And right. people, and people, you know what people chasing? And I told a young boy this. He, I said, youngin, your generation, the generation of right now, it's a sea of an unloyal fan base on it. They don't, they don't, they don't like the artist. They like the song. Right. And it's right. a big difference when you're doing music. To understand right. that. It's like, I could dance to this. This shit was on TikTok. I'm, I'm rocking with it. So right. you got to be able to, to tap more into the fan to try to convert them to be a fan of you over the fan of a song. Right, Indeed. because because social media now allow you to see. See, when we was young, we we didn't get to see a nigga all the time. Mm. So we just had to believe a nigga music. You mm. feel what I'm saying? You couldn't tell me certain niggas wasn't gangsters and shit. I really believe that shit. But then now you can see a nigga on you listen to his music. You, you go to you go you go to motherfucker Instagram and YouTube. You eat like, for oh. breakfast. You like what? Well, and that fucked it. <laughs> And that fucked the whole fan. Who he say. It fucked the <laughs> fan. It fucked the fan energy up because, like, he seen Nas was like, "Damn, it's not." I seen Big Daddy Kane in the pool. I'm like, "Damn, it's." But now a nigga see a motherfucker be like, "Cause you got ten thousand followers, got the same watch Dirk got on." Man, them niggas ain't nobody. I'm just like, and, so, and that's the mentality. Social so media yeah. made made everything trivial because everybody's everybody's lit. Everybody's yep. somebody. You got a chain, you got a couple followers, you got a couple of bitches, you that nigga on your block. So it, it made everybody important, right? You got niggas that be like, I got more money than rappers. I, I'm more lit than rappers. You know, because everything is just in your face. We don't have a long time to live with things also, even with the music. Everything's so fast paced that we don't get a chance. Like albums used to come out a year, two years. Now it's like you drop an album four or five weeks later, that's over. Niggas got to come with a deluxe. There you go. Now, I'm going to ask all y'all something. Everybody here, y'all got something in the comments. All of y'all have multiple deals. Now, I need to ask y'all. Jimmy was finessing, though. Yo, he's this a, motherfucker he's a, was A&R's and shit. Multiple, he's, he's, he was A&R's <laughs> all, all kinds of shit. They said Jimmy He the head of director, the marketing and promotion of the A&R's. Signed the whole block, the block and all type of shit. Signed Jimmy was up there no. making up titles and shit. Niggas, put the gun down. I'm going to get you a deal. Shut up. I'm going to put you on the mix. Hey, go hey, get this up in the hood. Hey, listen. All the ball they came out, Jimmy was in the building. Doing all type of shit. He ran through the buildings. <laughs> he, he said, well, you're hot. You got to get it. Yeah, <laughs> Let me run the label. 100%. You got to do everything you possibly can. Yeah. I had a good I mean I was I was in a great space I was in a good position I just ain't had the head for it I was still too young I had the opportunity now How old was you when you was A&R? 20 Shit Six or 27 You just was wilding out 26, 27 I mean I was still Very active in the street Jimmy was smoking like in the office This nigga ain't that good son <laughs> <laughs> The dust no, but I need I need to know because all of y'all all y'all was on major and independent. Now coming from y'all standpoint, and if y'all had to get some game to a young motherfucker, all three of y'all, starting with you, Jimmy, what is better, independent or major? I mean, it depends on, on who the artist is. So you gotta understand if you want to be an independent artist, you had to be very business minded. You had to come from a hustling background. You have to want to get up and get your own and know what it's gonna take to get your own and be ready for a lot of discouragement. But if you're ready for that, the pay is very good. Now, for the average artist who wants to be a rapper or a singer or whatever, going to a major label might be a little bit better for you because you have a hell of a support system. You got a building that's going to take your artistry and help you propel it 10 times over if you really got some shit. So it's like pros and cons to the both of it. Um, for me, it was better for me to go independent because Dipset was so hot at the time and I tried to get major deals, <clears throat> tried to get a million dollars from Rockefeller, they dubbed me, all that type of stuff. And then sitting back and then watching... Uh, how they was used to do it in the South. I'm like, yo, Cam, they not going to care if we on Def Jam or Atlantic or whatever label. As long as they know Dipset is putting out an album, we going to eat. So he like, you're right. That's why we took the independent label approach and did our deal with Koch and made shit loads of money by taking that approach. And I think that helped a lot of East Coast artists start to figure out the independent approach can be 
more profitable if they dive into that. But now it's a little bit different because it comes with streams. So now you're dealing with the youngest that was born into the, the new millennials they call that was born into this computer technology who actually figured out how streams could put money in their pockets before the labels do. And that kind of had the labels back against the wall. So it's a little bit different. Some of these artists are smart enough to accumulate streams to put a shitload of money in their pocket. And when they get a shitload of money in their pocket, they have this thing in their mind like, fuck the label, I don't leave the label because they figured out the loop. But not knowing that the label is only going to enhance that dollar. Yep. And when you get the label to start spending millions and millions of dollars, that's a free bank that you really ain't got to pay back. They say recoup, but it's not held against you for anything real in life. Right. They just want you to get a, a hit to make some bread mm -hmm. to pay them back and shit like mm -hmm. that. So it's however you approach it. You dig? They say you get what you uh, negotiate, not what you deserve. So you got to be very small when you negotiate and what you deserve. Mm. You may know. Nigga, everything he just said. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, like, 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 really though, like. He said, nigga. It's, it's, it's to each his own because everybody's different. So it's, I mean, the good, the good thing about being on a major is that you're able to play with that bank, the marketing money, those marketing dollars, those resources, that's, that's what you need to propel you mm -hmm. to stardom. You understand? Like, what they spending on, on, uh, on your song at radio, what they spending for marketing, what they spending on promotions, that makes the difference. That makes all the difference. I mean, I mean marketing is everything. It's everything. Living in a world where, where you need to be out there. So, having those, those ad dollars and those those resources of the building is definitely makes the difference. Now, um, depending on who you are, you know, independent could be a, a, a harder uphill battle. But like I said, every artist is different. Every situation is different. So, you know, um, it all depends. For me, I think in order, if, you, if you're an artist and you're thinking about going independent, to go independent, you got to have structure. Mm -hmm. And you got to have somebody that know what the fuck they doing. And somebody that got some money. If you just an artist who just Definitely know who just know how to get in the booth and just rap and just perform and just then a major label is for you because you need somebody that's going to do everything else. You know what I'm saying? So independence be about having a motherfucker that if you look at all the motherfuckers that's independent and they and they won, they all had somebody on their team that knew what the fuck they was doing from a record label standpoint or some, or they had already been through the game. Right. Like Jimmy and them had already been on a record label for years. So they could kind of, they, they in, they know how shit running now. They met everybody. They know who they got to go to to do radio. They know who they got to go to to do marketing. They, okay, we might not be spending what we usually were spending, but fuck it, here you go, we spending this. Okay, we spending this. So to go independent, you got to have some structure. If Definitely. you just out there with no structure and you just throwing records at the wind, that shit ain't going to do nothing. Either structure or very high record. You know, a lot the of only money. thing you ain't gonna need structure for if you got a sizzler on it. But and then there's different type of independence, like you know, this right. distribution. Distribution is the rawest independence you can have for yourself right. because that's just a, a label that's giving taking ten percent for them to distrib distribute your records across all platforms digitally and what about TuneCore and DistroKid? That's distribution. Straight distribution. That's the rawest form of right. independence. Yeah. That means they only taking a small percentage, you retain a big percentage, but everything is held on you. And then you have independent labels who are a smaller version of a major right. label who give you independent deals, but they take a little bit more than what a distribution label would, would, would take. So it's, it's, you know what I mean? And you got like many majors that's going to spend marketing dollars. That's gonna spend some money. It's not gonna be, they're gonna put a budget together. It's not, it might not be the the, the million dollar budget you was gonna get at at uh at Sony, but it, it'll be something smaller. You understand? So it's different. Because true independent, true independent is like nigga, you ain't got nothing. It's just you and your money. Yeah. And your music. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you find some distribution and, and it's just you because you still gotta have that money. You gotta have that hot record and some money, regardless of what. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Game Time. Sports, live concerts, events. I'm talking about them last minute tickets, seats you probably never get is on Game Time. What you need to do right now, you need to download the Game Time app. You see us right now, we ready to go to the game. Download the Game Time app right now, create a login and redeem code dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z. And off your first purchase, you get $20 off. Download the, I'm talking about last minute tickets. Download Game Time. 
What are you waiting for? This summer, you got all types of shows going on. You got Wiz Khalifa, Alicia Keys, Pusha T, Kendrick Lamar. I'm telling you, it's going down. And you want them last minute tickets and some of them tickets that you'll never get, some seats you'll probably never get. And it's not just shows, you also got sporting events. So what you need to do right now is download Game Time, Game Time app right now. And, I mean, log in, create a login and redeem code dollars, D-O-L-L-A-Z, and get $20 off your first purchase, Game Time. So let me ask y'all this, man. You know, Wilder want to talk that, you know, he, he educating the youth. I respect it, man. Man, what's the flyest part of motherfucking New York, man? Brooklyn. Mm. Oh, he lies man, down. Guess, man, I, wait, 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 hold on. Wait, I, why, 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 why the fuck you gonna tell him he lied? Because it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I don't give fuck a fuck. What the fuck are you talking about? This is another nigga from Brooklyn. No, no, all of, listen, I love Harlem. I love Harlem. They love me in Harlem. I come through Harlem like I'm from Harlem. They fuck with me in Harlem. Nah, so what you got to say? But Brooklyn, I mean, Brooklyn is just everything, bro. I mean, it's just but that's, everything. That's cool, it's just, but that's not just, fly. Like, the no. flyest place in New York, the flyest place in the world, let's get to this, known historically, historically, the flyest place in the universe is, is Harlem. Is, wait, wait, how, wait, wait, how is it known historically? Historically. Historically. Wait, how is that known historically? Cause yeah, have you seen Jim Brooklyn lately? Shit up historically, you make that shit up historically. No, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Google it. The most yeah. stylish place in the world. It's, it's going to say really? Oh. really. Google it. It's on Google. Let's 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 check it out. It, it, I guarantee you, say Brooklyn. The, 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 the most the, stylish place in New York. The most he said stylish place in New York. <laughs> Got to be Brooklyn. Most stylish place in New York. Downtown Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. But you got to say, it, see, it, when you style it, Paris, France. Paris, no, France no, is the most York. stylish place in the world, man. Stylish place Look at Jimmy be making shit up on the fly, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look like when he was in the office. Man, that nigga ain't They wrong good. about that. Was, Paris no more fly to Harlem is crazy. Yes, it they is. They talking about the structure. Like, they got the Eiffel right, they got Tower the top and shit 10, like the that. The top 10 fly, the top but 10 What are you talking place? about? For for Eiffel Tower and shit like that, or no, we talking no, about for clothes? That you yeah, gotta you see might if gotta you put clothes in. Yeah, you gotta New put York like City for fashion. Number New York. All right, but you got fashion. You gotta make sure most stylish place in New York City. Fashion though, you gotta make sure they say fashion. Man, they gonna say the Bronx. That's crazy. <laughs> no, the fuck they ain't. That's crazy. Bronx and Brooklyn. Shout out to the, the Bronx. Bronx and Brooklyn is like the same. It's like the same. It's like the same. comes to, well, that's, <laughs> not <true. laughs> that's, that's, that's not true. Out of getting shot up. That's not true. I heard the Bronx and Brooklyn is about the same. Listen. What it say? What it say, Lo? It ain't popping Is it any truth to that? Is it any truth to that? The Bronx is the dirtiest part. I listen. Nah, I'm not with that. Shout out to the Bronx. The Bronx and Brooklyn have a lot of similarities. No Bronx, no. They have a lot of similarities. And Harlem is like cousins. Y'all know that. They have a lot of similarities. You hear this shit? Across the, the street in Brooklyn, they, definitely no. have a lot of similarities because we Bronx? live close symmetrically. Don't yeah. mean that 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 we're not connected. But by no, family. y'all have a lot of similarities, like the we style. Have, no, not the style. Like, like, we don't even talk the same. Timberlands. Y'all say B. Yo. Y'all say B. We gonna fuck the interview up. Y'all gotta get. Yeah, come on. This, this is gonna this go is, all yeah, day. This is an argument that we have every day. <laughs> This is an everyday situation. Because so, naturally, Harlem so niggas just niggas is the flyest niggas ever. Like, 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 I'm saying that. Naturally. Like, I'm, <laughs> listen, just in case nobody knew, out there in TV land, I'm from Best Star. That's cool. That's that what they call Best Star, the Harlem of Brooklyn. You got to stop. Damn, he remixed a lot of shit. He remixed a lot of shit. You got to stop. He remixed that. He remixed a lot of shit. Out of nowhere off the top. The Harlem of Brooklyn. You just remixed this shit. You ain't said that. Ready Rock. It was already mixed up. He remixed that shit. He ready rock. Best out of Harlem of Brooklyn. He crazy. Listen, what I'm part of New York it? got the best rappers? Naturally, Harlem. What the fuck are fuck you talking about? How you gonna say Harlem? He was some bullshit, man. Brooklyn but, got the best. Come on, no, Brooklyn did have Biggie Brooklyn. though. Ed listen, Hove. Listen, that's listen, it. That's listen. all you got. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You leave it there. Listen, it's, over. It's, over. it's over. Harlem it's over. got Dipset. What happened? Okay, we I love it. Okay, he's got Nas. But Biggie though. I'm saying you can't put Biggie because Biggie's the greatest of all times. So he right. was cheated. He didn't get to show us how fly ben, ben he was Stato. about to be. So I, you dig? Like I never could, mm -hmm. never ever compare anything to but Biggie hold on, boy, or but, Tupac. But Fab, the flyest nigga in Brooklyn. He from, he from I mean, flyest nigga in New York. He from Brooklyn. Best style. Brooklyn. He cool. Definitely. He, he, he cool. He, he was cool. cool. He said he, he cool. Said he cool. cool. Yeah, that's my man. Shout out to Spiz. Spiz, Spiz gets super fly. We already established that. He got a problem bullshit. with it. You heard? He got that's a problem bullshit. with it. He get, hey, but then we get on camera and let Harlem come out. He cool. He cool. <laughs> Shout out to Spiz. He cool. Nigga, all right. Nigga, all right. He, 
He gonna get that. He gonna, he gonna buy an outfit just for this interview. Yeah, hey, fabulous. Yeah, the only right nigga, the caption. Fabulous. The only nigga I know work out in Christian Dior shit, yeah. man. He got Chris. He got Gucci shit on. He work out in. <laughs> I'm like nigga, you definitely sweaty. coming Gucci niggas shit. fat. Man, nigga, nigga church outfits. It's not even. See, the, the the thing is this. It's not even just the outfits. It's the coordination. <laughs> the socks, socks with the, the wristbands, <laughs> all the shit, the headband, like head, like it's just crazy. The watch like, match, all that yeah, shit. everything, man, everything is coordinated perfectly. Fab fucking off the hook. Who the top five uh, greatest rappers from New York of all time? That's crazy. Why people always do damn, that? I was, that's shit too I was like I the top even, five. I'm like somebody's actually the other day, and it's like, yo, damn, it's like that's crazy because it's just like so many rappers I love from New York coming up, yeah, coming up. I can't be like top five. It's then we're too many. Good, I can't talk about it's too many. Slick too Rick, many. Rock, no, Cam, okay, so who the, who, Big Daddy, oh. Kris One. That's like that's just that's just right there. Like you dig, then and you that's just that dig, era. You dig. Like gang star, you gonna make me forget about gang star? Like it's this you can't just magnetic. See now you went a little deep. Yeah, you went deep. That's I had no, he's a hip hop historian. Y'all can't yeah. fuck with Keith him on that. Said, cool Keith said. Cool, cool Keith. Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Cool Keith said. I'm wait, the wait, greatest wait, wait, MC cool, in the whole wide world. Ain't nobody say nothing to him. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Just for the record, just for the record, this nigga's a hip hop historian. Cool Keith in them. That's crazy. Yeah. None of y'all he niggas can't, don't Kango got more kid, knowledge than this Kango nigga. Kango Kid era and all that. Kango Kid. Yo, Kango. Talk, I, I just met the Kango Kid's son, too. You did? You yeah. ain't oh, no, his son. You ain't even talking about Kango Kid. Uh, you done met him. You supposed to call me you for You didn't have no like Kango, that. though, back in the day. Oh, no, he died, stuff. right? No, he had a Jerry Curl a oh, dry oh, joint. The Kango Kid. <laughs> Kango <laughs> Kid died. He passed away. I got to do my research. I ain't sure. I usually know shit like that. Yeah, I think he passed away. he passed away. I think he just passed away. I got to ask y'all a question, right? Welcome to another episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game Business Spotlight, where we bring to you the news you can use and just information, man, that you can utilize and can help you take your game to the next level. Today, we got Mr. Tax Free Carter huh? in here. Listen, man, Cofield Advisors, man, this dude, listen, when I say tax free, the game he was giving us is unbelievable. The game he's going to give you is going unbelievable. Before Nigga. we even begin, I'm telling you right now, Nigga. right now, before we begin, what I need you to do right now, I need you to text GAME to 312-847-2309. 312-847-2309. Right now, he's giving away a 1,000 ebooks on how to be tax-free in the game when you're making money. And guess what? The first 100 people is going to, listen, have a chance to win $1,000. Somebody out of that first hundred that listen, that text this number, that got a chance. Listen, go ahead. understand this. His ebooks cost two hundred dollars. So this man sitting here giving away two hundred thousand dollars. No, two hundred thousand and one, two hundred and one thousand dollars. Yeah, because he's giving away two hundred thousand yeah. ebooks Thanks, and he gonna man. get somebody a thousand dollars in cash. Our, our job is to pass down the information we have, right? So that's what I'm about. Tell yeah. me where you come from, Carter. Yeah, man, so I come from the south side of Chicago, bro. Um, three, uh, nine of us in a three bedroom home. Mm. Um, my mom died when I was fourteen. And my dad died when I was 16. And respectfully, it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because it made me grow up at 16. Most people don't grow up to 25. So I look at it as I had a head start on my peers as far as getting my life together and going on the right track. So that was tough, man, but I found a mentor. And if you, if you find a mentor, your life can change forever. And my mentor told me these two things. He said, if you're tired of being broke, you want to make money. Wealthy people do two things. They make their money work for them and they keep the IRS out of their pockets. So if you can teach people how to invest their money or teach people how to keep their money, you'll never have to worry about money again. And so I ran with just diving in. I got my CPA. I'm a, I'm a tax strategist. And my goal is to teach every entrepreneur in the world how to keep all the money that they, that they make. Y'all teach them a million dollars worth of game, right? Mm -hmm. My job is to help you all keep it. That's simple. And, and, and how do you go about that? Like, what's the first, like, if, if I'm just a, uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm just a regular guy, I'm doing my thing, I started the business, I'm bringing in 200000 well, how do I keep this, how do I keep from paying all them taxes? That's a fact. So two things you need to know about taxes. Number one, the tax code was made to benefit entrepreneurs and investors. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're creating jobs for the economy, they're going to give you tax breaks because they don't have to do that. If you're an investor, you're stimulating the economy, so the government, we got you with tax breaks. So as long as you own the right team, that's number one. Number two is you have to understand how tax write-offs work. Being a business owner, anything you do that is related, any money you spend that's related to your business, you get to write off on your taxes. So y'all, this podcast equipment... Anything that is ordinary and necessary for you to operate your business, you can write off in your taxes. So what I teach people is why not live your best life but get the IRS to pay for it? So to, to, to your point, let's say some entrepreneur has $200,000, right? The, the average person pays 50% 50 in taxes. That's a $100,000 tax bill. But I would encourage an entrepreneur, hey, you just made $200,000. Why don't you take advantage of what's called the auto deduction? So you, there's a way that you can write off cars in your business easily. So I would tell them, hey, go look at a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, $200,000, right? You don't have to pay for the whole car. 
you can simply finance the car, put $10,000 down, finance the rest. As long as the car weighs over 6,000 pounds, the IRS will give you a $200,000 tax deduction. And you only put $10,000 down. So all you have to do <coughs> is get a car that you want, use it for business, podcasts, social media, whatever. And the IRS gives you a $200,000 tax deduction for the cost of the vehicle. You ain't even paid for it. You just financed it. So if, say if somebody out here, they do anything, they're an influencer, right? Mm, this is fine. Okay, it's good. They're, they're influencer. They all on social media. They do anything. They represent brands. They get money coming into the LLC based off of them. What's name? Could they? Could they? Could they write off the Louis Vuitton, the Hermes, the Goyard? Could they write that shit off? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so let me teach y'all how to write off clothes, which is very important. So many people are scared of the tax code. They don't even bother trying, which is the problem, right? So let me give you all a game on how to write off clothes. If you go shop and buy a garment and you get your logo visibly stitched or pressed on the garment, right? So, you know, million dollars worth of game, whatever, you get your logo visibly stitched. The IRS now sees that as advertising because you're now a walking advertisement for your business. Therefore, you can write off the cost of the clothes, the stitching cost, and every time you take it to the cleaners. So these are ways that you can deduct your clothing expenses in your business. Now, with luxury is a little different because it has to be ordinary and necessary. Yeah. But my thing is this, why not get a brand deal? Right. If you get a brand deal with Rolex and you, you can write off all the Rolexes you want, because as long as it has a chance of bringing you in money, it's now tax deductible. So my, my encouragement, if you're an influencer, get go whatever brand fashion over whatever brand you want, do, you know, get an affiliate link with them or get some type of brand deal with them. And now you can write off every time you buy their clothes, every time you travel with it, every time you do content like living tax free is not hard. You just have to be smart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. All right. So now the big dogs. You a big dog, you know, the millions coming in. Oh, let's get all it. Type of taxes, you're getting millions. Millions. How do you, like, listen, you know, because all the big guys, man, the big, the big. This y'all. Uh, yeah, nah, you know. <laughs> this y'all, you know. I mean, <laughs> but all the big guys, you know, getting a shitload of money. Yeah. And how do you protect that real money when you're getting them M's? For sure, for sure. So wealthy people do very, something very simple. Um, and I'll give you all strategy on this in a second. But they simply use their money to buy assets and then they borrow against the assets to get the tax-free money. So there's a strategy called buy, borrow, die, right? Um, shout out to my bro, Chris, for reminding me about this, but um, it's a simple strategy that millionaires use to live tax-free. You buy real estate, right? And over time, the, the value of your property goes up. So let's say you bought it at 1,000, I mean 100,000, and it goes to 500,000. You can take out an equity loan and get that 400,000 out. And the IRS does not consider loans taxable. So that's a $400,000 in tax-free money. Then, before you die, you buy life insurance, right, for the same value of that bit of that building. So now, when you die, the life insurance proceeds go to your kids tax free. They can use that money to pay off the building you just bought. So you just got a deduction for getting the property. You got tax free money from the property for um, taking out a loan, and then you get life insurance when you die. Your kids get the money tax free, and now you pass this piece of real estate down to your kids. So I, I tell people, if you're going to get into this, into this millionaire game, you have to start using your money to buy assets, right? Y'all business owners, right? Y'all have the, yeah. the, the, the million dollars worth of game. Y'all can simply open up a, a solo 401k or a SEP IRA, put $65,000 or $120,000, depending on your situation, and you all get a tax deduction for investing your money. That's what wealthy people do. They, they invest their money and write it off on their taxes, and then their money can grow tax-free as well. That's major. Now- when it comes to getting audited, how did that play? Well, yeah, so that you want to be keep the documents, right? So we talk about all these strategies, but I would be remiss to say, like, yo, you yeah, need to you keep your receipts. You need to keep your documents. Get a good bookkeeper, right? All these people in your team um, are tax deductible as well, but you need a financial team to be keeping receipts. If you need an app, I recommend everybody use QuickBooks. What y'all use for y'all? You know? QuickBooks. QuickBooks. Use QuickBooks. Keep the receipts. Take a picture of it, Joe. And then um, right upload, quick, yeah. upload it into the um into, into the into the software. Yeah. But it's so easy to avoid getting audited. Actually, let me give you a tip. Give you a tip. You told me, um, well, I'm not going to get into that, but LLCs get audited fairly often, less than 1%. If you upgrade your LLC to an S corporation, it decreases your audit risk by 1,500%. So you are 1,500 times less likely to get audited once you move from an LLC to an S corporation. And, and S corps help you save on taxes. But, so, so this is my whole thing. <laughs> now we're going to get into it. Let's get into it. At the end of the day, a lot of people don't understand the pain that come with paying taxes. Especially, it's, I it think hurts. I, I think most because shit didn't hurt in me. I'm talking about had me and you know crying in the corner sometimes. <laughs> it just be hurt because the past is so much money all over, 
and ain't nobody rob you, ain't nobody threaten your life. You just have to just like, here you go. <laughs> you just be like, ah, damn. Here's gosh. the advice I can give you. Do you know there's two tax seasons? Go ahead. Most people think it's one. There's two tax seasons. There's tax saving season and there's tax paying season. Most people worry about taxes January through April. When, once the previous year closes out, there's nothing we can do about it. But you need to be focused during tax paying season. That's July through December. You need to be meeting with your CPA, meeting with your strategist, building out a plan on how to save on taxes. Mm-hmm. Right? All right, all right Wallo, y'all need to get this. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, y'all need to get this uh, Mercedes Benz AMG. Y'all need to get this Eurus. Eurus yeah. is four hundred fifty thousand dollars. You yeah. can put fifty thousand dollars down. You can get a four hundred fifty thousand dollars tax deduction for getting a, a, a dream car. Mm-hmm. Right. So you need to be focusing during tax planning season. And I think it'll help. Oh, I got, I got another hack for y'all. Can I get one more? Yeah, well, keep doing your thing. So I, this strategy is called um, your board of advisors. And the reason I teach this strategy is because it's not just about living tax-free. It's about living your best life and having the IRS pay for it. So if you're LLC just, or S-Corp, whatever, you can have a board of advisors. This could be your homies, your family members, whatever. The IRS allows you to have four board of advisor meetings per year, anywhere in the country you want. So you can go to Dubai with your family, call it a board of advisors meeting, sit there for four to five days, to, you know, to talk business for one hour and then go kick it the rest. And you can write off the cost of the flights. You can write off the lodging. You can write off the meals, all this stuff while you're traveling with your family and traveling with your friends. You now call it your board of advisor meetings. I'm going to Brazil next month to do mine. And it's all ways on how to like, again, I'm living my best <laughs> life. How much is it you? That's about five 10, maybe 10 bands. But again, when you get to a certain income level, you are looking for tax deductions because you got two choices, bro. You're either going to spend this shit accordingly for the company or they're going to take that shit from you. Did you hear about Grant Cardone? Yeah, when he bought the jet. Why aren't we doing stuff like that? Why aren't, yeah. why don't we have people in our corner teaching us, hey man, you need to go buy this, get this. Yeah. Um, to save on taxes, bro. Like I'm not giving them 50% of my money. I'm not, if you give the IRS 50% of your money, you work half the year for free. Yes, you did. God damn. God damn. But listen, listen, you know, a lot of people say they want to be a million. I want to make a million dollars. How much if you, if you don't got the game, how much you paying on tax? Tell them how much you got to pay on taxes off a million dollars. Yeah. $510,000 on average. So average person pays 51% in taxes. Why 51%? You got federal tax, you got state tax, you got FICA taxes, you got city tax, sales tax, all these combined. All taxes. People just thinking about the feds when they don't, they don't break that shit down. They don't break it down. I they told, don't think about You remember I was telling you about that city and county? Enough yeah. Enough. Oh, outside of the feds. Yeah, yeah. I'm th- that's So now you at, bro, that's a lot of money. And that's why, again, like, I'm going to give these people the, the, the book for free. Because, like, you can't build generational wealth if you're giving half your money away. Yeah. It's just impossible to do. So my thing is like, yo, like you work hard and, and, and the wealthy people I know, they don't pay taxes. They either pay somebody, uh, they pay a good accountant or they learn themselves, right? And the most expensive tax we pay as a black culture is the ignorance tax. Mm. That's a tax of not knowing, the tax of not wanting to know, the I tax of tax. putting your head, <laughs> we the pay, tax bro, of turning your head tax. around, you know what I'm saying? Like, we shouldn't be doing that, y'all. Like, I paid the ignorance tax. We definitely paid, <laughs> listen, we definitely paid so the ignorance tax. So that means I paid the federal, the state, the FICA, the <laughs> ignorance, the stupid no, no, you- and the jackass tax. <laughs> all them tax, but I'm going to say this, though. Right now, this is, what I need though. People, <laughs> this is what I need people to do, right? Because all this game he's talking about, he's giving out on his e What you need to do is you need to text GAME to 312-847-2309. 312-847-2309. Mr. Tax-Free Carter, listen, he's going to bless you. The yeah. first 100 people that text this got a chance of winning 1,000 people, but he's giving away 1000 a 1000 a $1,000 e-books. 1000 He's giving away $1,000 to the first 100 people. Somebody got a chance, but he's giving away 1000 e-books. These e-books cost $200 a piece. He's giving up, I'm talking about a million dollars worth of game to save you a million dollars. Can save I, you a bunch of money. Keep you, going. Let man. me just tell them. So, like, when you when you get the, the ebook, whatever, I don't, I've never given this away for free before. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the first time. Yeah, it's a million dollars worth of game. It's a million dollars worth of game. You, you got to come gotta correct. Get, yeah. um, I'll teach you all the, like, every tax strategy I know. I know we have to go over them really fast here, but like, we haven't even talked about how you can write up your rent. We haven't talked about, about it. Oh, okay. You're giving away all the free game here. So, here's, here's how you write up your rent, right? It's, it's actually not that, not that hard. If you um, are a business owner and you have a home office, most people worked from home during COVID. They had to build a little mm-hmm. home office. If you have a home office, the IRS would let you take what's called a home office deduction. And the way you calculate this is you just take whatever the home office area, let's say, let's say you have a thousand square feet in your apartment and your home office is 25% of that, mm-hmm. right? So you got a 250 square feet home office. You take that percentage, whatever your home office percentage, if it's 25%, you multiply that by your rent. 
So if your home office represents 25% of your home and your rent is $4,000 a month, you're getting a $1,000 a month tax deduction from working from home, something we already doing. Damn. But most people are don't not taking that. these deductions because they don't know that. Yep. And my, th my thing is like, I, I'm in rooms with a lot, of, a lot of wealthy people and unfortunately they don't look like us and they talk about this to their kids at the dinner table. We don't get that talk at the dinner table no. because our parents didn't know and they can't teach us what they didn't know. And a lot of us ain't even sitting at the dinner table no more to even talk to our parents. And social media. You know, social media took everything over. So it's like a lot of kids get talk. McDonald's and an iPad. <laughs> yeah. That, that, and that's a fact. And, and and my thing is like, yo, if you're going to build generational wealth. Exp so if you have kids, y'all have kids. Yeah. Okay. Do you know, you can pay your kids from your business. You can pay your kids from your business and they receive the money tax free and you get a tax deduction for doing it at the same time. You want me going into this? Later? Which you're going to it more. What did okay. you paying for? So you get, so have them do work in your business, sweep the floors, clean the equipment, do it, you know, do whatever you want. But you can pay each of your children up to twelve thousand nine hundred dollars per year from your business, doing a little work in the office. They get that thirteen thousand dollars tax free. You get to get a thirteen thousand dollar tax deduction for paying them, and they can use six thousand of that money to invest in something we call our Roth IRA. Yeah, a Roth IRA, and if you if they invest six thousand in a Roth IRA from seven to seventeen, they will have one hundred and seventy thousand dollars in tax free money waiting on them when they turn eighteen. Now we're setting our kids up for actual generational wealth. You know, now they can start a business that they can do whatever they want instead of like having you know the credit cards in their name like what my parents did for me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think you know it's it's really powerful, your man. Parent, your parents had the uh, cable bill, cable bill, and, and yeah, and the phone bill. Nigga was six with a cable bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten thousand dollars, ten thousand dollar bill on his name. And, and no disrespect, they just didn't know what they didn't know. Absolutely, but that's no longer your excuse. So y'all gonna text the word? Well, game. they knew what they knew. They <laughs> fucked their name up, so they had to use yours. They could use the only clean one in the house. Look, they had to watch the game. Look, so y'all can text the word game to three one two eight four seven twenty three zero nine. I'm trying to give y'all the game for free, Mister right. Tax Free. I'm trying to give y'all the right. game for Nigga, free. You just gave it to us, and you about to give them some more. I, I need an ebook. I ain't right, right, right. I ain't texting niggas. Pass me my <laughs> so ebook. <laughs> so ebook has. Um, um, the, 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 the tax free living strategies that we talked about today, plus the list of deductions that they can get from A to Z. So if you don't know what you can deduct, you got one for us right now, right? I can, yeah, it's, it's an ebook, so I can just give it to y'all. Yeah, 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 text that to me. And y'all y'all got my numbers. Hit me up. If yeah. I told you, like, if I don't help y'all save, Nigga, off, I'm texting off, you right now. Of our friendship, if I don't help y'all save at least a quarter million dollars in taxes, I failed y'all as a as a homie. Say no more. As a friend. Yeah, say say no, more. no more. Okay. And um Don't fail me now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say one last thing to the people. So it's We're not, talking. you know, it's not just about you know, keep the bag too. I know a lot of a lot of you all are not making the bag yet. A lot of them haven't made their first ten thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand, right? So I we me and my team came up with this initiative called Melanin Money. That's where you could get the clothing from, brilliant mm -hmm. back being there and making. And we have a community called the Melanin Millionaire Club. Where we teach them every week different strategies on how to, how to become a first-generation millionaire in your family. And I want to do something special because I know you have a lot of people that are aspiring for that. So um, if you go to melaninmoney.com forward slash join. Write it down. Okay. It's going to pop up on the screen. Uh, melaninmoney.com forward slash join. I'll give everybody, anybody, a dollar trial, two weeks. Come in there, see what we're about, take some classes, come to one of our in-person events. Like, I'm I'm bro I'm, I'm from the dirt like like if I told y'all well, I'm not supposed to be here and I'm trying not to get emotional I'm not supposed to be here bro it would be irresponsible for me not to pass down my information to other people there's so many people that are still struggling bro right. so many people that we know and we made it like they look at us like yo y'all up right. there so we wanted to create a way man to pour back into community and and give them some ways on how to learn from us so they don't have to learn from people who don't look like them right that makes sense yeah so, write that down okay. tell Make them sure and tell them, tell them, where in, they go, tell them where they could go at again um, so you can go to melaninmoney.com. Melanin um, it'll be on the screen forward slash join. All your audience gets a you know, free dollar trial for two weeks. They can come, stay, leave, whatever. But I want to get an opportunity to see something greater. You know, like my mentor tells me this all the time. You, you can't be what you can't see. Yeah. So if you never saw a millionaire or a hundred thousand there, you can't even see yourself. Like when you was in prison, how was it like that for you? Like you couldn't, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And I, I just admire you. All as, you as, can as, see as, was the Twinkies. <laughs> He's a nut. He's uh, a loser. I don't. I still don't understand. We we'll talk about this offline. How you how you came out of jail with a mindset of thinking that you could become something more than what you were in that moment? Because I ain't let I ain't let I ain't let prison make me angry. A lot of us come home from jail angry and entitled and tough and tough. I wasn't going. I wasn't with that shit. My whole thing was like, "There's a bigger world out there. Tomorrow's gonna be better than yesterday." So I wasn't on some. Ooh, I'm tougher than anybody. I'm realer than anybody. No, I just came home happy. You know, I, I did. I went to jail for some shit. I did. I it wasn't like. 
I was innocent in that, so I knew why I was there. I did my time. I came home, and I said I got another shot. Hey man, and I salute you both for doing this. Like y'all, I know y'all think y'all know how many lives y'all changing, bro, but y'all really like changing the game. So I just want to let y'all appreciate, know. I appreciate you, Carter. So make sure y'all text game yeah. to three one two eight four seven twenty three zero nine. Get that ebook, and the first hundred is going you have a chance to win a thousand dollars. We appreciate y'all for tapping in for this business segment. And that was another million dollars worth of game business setting. Tap in, miss a tax free Carter, and it's just like that. Right. I mean, Jim got the, 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 the trap phone jumping. This is a serious question. I need to know this. And it, it's two two artists, right? Who was a bigger artist? Joe Buttons or Gilly? <laughs> <laughs> Who had a bigger song? I need to know. I say Joe Buttons had a bigger song. Damn. Who had a bigger right song? Now. This is crazy. This is nah, crazy. Just this how you can answer. No, no, fuck hey, that. Listen, this is crazy. Just crazy. how you can answer. No, this is crazy. Let me tell you something. This is crazy. Who had a bigger song? Hey, listen, that's just crazy. how you can answer. Pump, That's my shit. Just how you answer that last question about the New York Rangers. That's wild. Why you be handling your man like that? That's crazy. He was a yeah, that's crazy. He was a, he was a, he was a barber. No, he was a bar. He was a bar. He used to do bar oh, tours. What? Just what? tour bars. <laughs> he just tore bars. He had a couple of them joints up in Brooklyn. Just the bars, little local joints. I remember, no, I remember me and Gil, I remember Gil used to come to see New York. See how he, see how he passed nah. over that shit? Me and Gil was cool, like, <laughs> Gil used to he's pull a, up. He's a nut ass nigga. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm saying, man. Bar tours. <laughs> you used to do bar tours I did a record with Gil years ago, yeah, then uh-huh. we did a couple maybe. Yeah. But listen, y'all forgot, y'all ain't answered this question, though. No. Outside of that, we already know Joe bigger than you and rap. <laughs> but listen, what I wanted to say was this: Joe had a bigger song. This song was way bigger than anything you ever did. Combine that joint, pump, pump. Combine. This is crazy. Pump it up, with Joe. They get it tough. They do They get it. all that shit. He Joe spit better than you. I, I got Joe. Smack. We can set it up. We can set the shit up. This is I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, no. Smack. We gonna do the battle. The, the real battle. battle. I, I could beat oh. the shit out of Joe Buds in the no, battle. No, no, my nigga from Harlem. No, this is the best oh. battle ever. Who? Who the best fucking smack battler ever on fucking from Harlem? Ooh. The most slick talking ass nigga. Murder Moot. No. Who? Loaded Lux. Is he? That nigga was talking that shit. Shout out to Loaded Lux. This is my guy Shout right there. Shout out to Lux. Lux go crazy. Lux go crazy. Shout out to Mook and Lux. Definitely. Yeah, but Mook is good. But Lux was just, I don't know. He was something else. I'm talking about that nigga was talking slick. That nigga had wings on his tongue. He was talking that shit. Now, when it comes to how many fucking deals you had, Jim? In my life, in my time, yeah. Oh, and I, I, I really had a lot of deals. Like, um, right now I got like four deals running. Um, <laughs> damn, and I'm about to get a deal for this Spanish album too. Um, so let's see. <laughs> hey, you ain't Spanish, nigga. I am Spanish. I'm half Puerto Rican. You is. Yeah. Nigga speaks some Spanish. Oh, I, I ain't say I'm fluent like that. Oh, but see, oh see no more. Shit, he go, but I got a whole he Spanish. He gonna be on the track. Hola, no, no, no. I can let you. I got no, 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 no. You got. All right, it's called broken Spanglish. M- um, Muy bien. <laughs> Uh, shit like did. that, a <laughs> uh, Rosa boy. Oh, oh, nah. Shit ain't gonna make no sense. Way other than that, but uh, I, I ran through a few deals. I had a uh, diplomat deal. We had the uh, the Koch deal. Um, I had the deal up at Warner Brothers for uh, uh, Bird Gang. Um, I had another deal up at Warner Brothers for something else. Um, Two more other labels that I had got with, uh, I was I was just using when I had the opportunity to get money and put as much people on as I could. That's what I was doing and things like that. So I was just like he said, I really was pillaging and going in these offices and putting on niggas that I knew that was doing music and shit like that. Like I cut I cut a lot of checks. People won't people won't say it, but I put a lot of money in people's pocket just off the arm. Mm. That's major, man. When did you know you was when did you know you took a turn? Like, cause when when you first came out, you was more like just on some hype man type. I'm back in my man. You know what I'm saying? I, was, I definitely was the hype man. I was the hype man. I was the right man. I was everything in between. No, I no, started, say this. Please tell these niggas the important of being that, just holding your man down sometime. Oh, because we live in a world where nobody want to hold their fucking man down. That's one of the most important jobs you could have for anybody that's going to be successful. They got to know the rules to this shit. Like, everybody got to play a position, and I play my position to the T, to the point that I'm well off in life right now, and I can never take that away from Cam. We had a plan. 
And my job was to make sure Endo Bills, nothing happened to him. And he was safe at all times. And we was rocking at all times. And anything that he needed or desired, I would try to get or whatever it was I had to do to get and things like that. And in any situation we was in, if I had to bite the bullet, that's what I was going to do. And I was willing to do that wholeheartedly. And everybody knew that. And that's how we carried it. And from that, it was like a, yeah. it was a trickle effect. Everybody that was behind me took, took the same care of me like I took care of Cam and then same thing for Joel's and and that's how we kind of moved in a core like an army and shit like that because we all knew at the end of the day it was people that was important and something happened to them then it's nothing that's going to happen for us. So you being a hype man, you being fucking slash security, everything you got to be for your man and then you say okay, fuck it, let me, let me, let me put my motherfucking feet in the water. Let me see what, how this shit yeah. going to work out for me. When, when did you know, hold up, all right, I got something. This shit moving. This this shit, okay. I'm I'm on now. I got my own. I, I'm doing my own thing now. You know what I mean? Not my own thing, but you feel what I'm saying? I got my own name out here and respected on some rap shit, and not just I'm I'm the hype man. I'm the. You feel what I'm saying? It was kind of a plan from the beginning. If you remember, I was on every one of Cam's album, even yeah. when I didn't mm -hmm. know how to rap. And he used to always tell me, once you figure out how to rap the same way you act in the streets, you're gonna be a star. You're gonna get a lot of money. But we're going to do it like this till you figure it out. I'm going to make right. sure you, it's an open field to whatever you want to do. Right. That's why you see I ended up doing video directing. I ended up being a manager. I ended up engineering his albums. I ended up doing everything under the sun, marketing and everything, because it was an open playing field. One thing we knew is what we wanted the people to see when Diplomats was on the screen and things like that. So the first part was about business. And I knew I had the music the playing field. And then I started seeing, watching Cam and May start making too much money doing the music. Like, it was just getting too much. It was it was getting too much. They're getting 30000 40000 a show. They're coming in with the mumps. I'm making good money, but I'm not making no artist money. So I started to take more dive at it. When he, by the time he got signed to Rockefeller, that's when I really started jumping into the music. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, one. I remember recording my first song uh, in, in, I forgot the, uh, what's the name of the studio? I, it had come to me. I remember recording my first song. And then it, actually, it was the year Philly had the All Star game here. What was 2003. That? Mm -hmm. 2003, I, I tell everybody the story. I never forget, Cam and everybody went to the All-Star game. I was waiting for a nigga to owe me some money. Nigga pissed me off. It wasn't look like I was getting no money. I said, I'm going to stay inside the studio and do this and do this record. End up doing the record. Record was fired. A nigga ended up calling me and to bring my money. I was stupid hype. Drove all the way from uh, the studio to motherfucking Philly playing that one song to the All-Star game. They was at a party, whoever party was, and I meet Cam and I'm coming to parking lot and I played the record for them and Cam was like, well, look like you could look like you got it. Yeah. And after that it was a jump start. And of course it went through the whole dip set things and all that. But still even now today I feel like I'm still learning how to rap mm. today. Because you love it. When you love that shit you always feel like you can get better. Yeah. Now Mano, you came home from jail. Mm hmm let me ask you a question. Before we go any further, did you have any jobs in prison? Because you know he was the prison masseuse. Yo, my oh my God, this is crazy. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a bad those, job to have. These yeah, niggas yeah, don't stop. This was bad job to have. Ass, toes, and elbows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lying on me, nigga. <laughs> he was That's a not, master glute ball in there. Fuck what? what? I, I got Mano worked in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. Come on, yeah. man. That's entry level. See, though. see, they put you in the kitchen. From the rip. Against your will. Yeah. I wasn't the type of nigga that wanted to be there. So, you know, if you see, I was a nigga that got into a lot of trouble when I was in prison. I went to prison, I was young. So, you know, it was, it was a different era. We was in there playing with razors and tagging on each other and shit like that. And so I, I spent a lot of time in the box. I averaged, what, 10 prisons in, in 10 years. You know, it some of the prisons. You the fuck like, out. Yeah, yeah. A lot of SHU time, a lot of box time, almost four years in a box. Um, so, yeah, you'll fall into jail. They'll throw you in the prison. I'm high. <coughs> I'm high. You hear? That I'm high. Yeah, I feel it. I'm high. That knock you out. Yeah, it's a good contact. thing, though. That knock you out. Yeah, yeah. Not that pocky yeah. out. That knock yeah, you out. That it. shit that knock you out. You heard yeah. me? <laughs> but, but to your point, yeah, yeah. I worked in the kitchen. Not long, though, because sometimes they'll throw you in the spot and tell you you got to be in there for at least 30 days before you can change it. Yeah. So, you know, but that was one of the things that helped me, though, because... I remember being in the spot and I just got there and I wanted to go home, right? And they was like, 
your shift starts. You had to, I had to get up something at like maybe like four thirty five in the morning every morning to go wash pots, some whatever the yep. fuck it was, right? Mm -hmm. That was that was what helped me when I came home because I felt like if I could do that, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that, then I can do anything. When I got home, it's nothing can keep me like because you come home with a different set of energy. Right, you come home like you want to do everything, want to get in everything. You know, I got a brand new son, so it's like you know what I could get up, get him every day, pick him up at seven thirty in the morning because when I was up up north and crackers were sending me into that motherfucking mess, so I did that. Mm -hmm. So you know, it made it made it put things in perspective for me and made things you know a lot a lot easier for me to deal with. That's major, man. So now you come home. Mm. How long was it before you signed your deal? I signed my first deal. After being home 18, 19 months. Yeah, because cause when you came home, it's so crazy. I was up at the labels, too, talking and talking. They're like, yeah, we interested in signing, man, you know, blah, 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 mm. blah. So I was like, you know what I mean? So you get signed. Mm. Start dropping. Mm -hmm. See, I was I was dropping before that. So I come in a game on a on a mixtape. Yeah. And the, like kind of that tail end, you know, the clues, the case slays, mm -hmm. you know, he made rest in peace, you know, um, that era. But it was going into the DVD era. Yeah. So for me, the smack DVDs, the, you know, the all access, the all, I got into that. Yeah. And, and, and I think, though, I don't think that I was niggas' favorite. Nah, you, was, you wasn't. I, as far as. Because you was talking about shit. I know. That, that, let me, talking let me get to that. Shit. I was talking shit, right? I wasn't niggas' favorite, but they liked the way I spoke. You understood it was something. I, I didn't like the way you speak at I, all. Damn. I, we, he whoa. was talking shit to you? Yeah, he had a problem with me for some reason. <laughs> Nigga said oh, my shit. name in one of his raps. There was, you there was a couple really raps. <laughs> there was a couple <laughs> raps. You did? Which you was fishing, you just you was fishing. Right, but you come yeah, up, because you come out with a different set of energy. Like, because you, you, I'm, you, the, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. I'm just the talking. The Brooklyn niggas, you, mentioned my, you keep mentioning my name. Okay, and 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 what you y'all came and, and this tried to didn't like, right, this you didn't like me at all, and, and you would come in a club three hundred deep, screwing your face like look at this nigga here. <laughs> that's, that's what <laughs> I was look doing. at this nigga. Yeah, I don't yes. recall. I don't recall this. You, you don't remember that? I don't recall this. <laughs> you don't remember? Nah, I was so no just came in there screwing you. Oh, plenty of times we always had screw I, face. Matches and shit like that. Them niggas followed me. Grin <laughs> off. Wait, hold on. So, <laughs> you, so, 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 this the first time we felt like you and Jim had a bunch of Mexican standoffs. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't stand each Couple other. Couple times it could have got nasty. Yeah, we couldn't stand each other. It was very sticky for a minute yeah. with us. Word. But we had mutual niggas though. All the so time. So yeah, they, they kept it down. Kept it right. Down. But what it was was I didn't understand the game. And I'm coming home with a, with a, with an energy like I'm the genuine article. I'm really was out here doing whatever. I, but it, it was I wasn't particularly talking about him. Yeah, you said I was my saying name. Shit about you said, everybody. You said Jimmy getting big in there. That was my name. That that that's he specific. Why you remember that line? 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 Jimmy getting big in there. See what Domain don't know what to say is. I came home on some nut ass jail shit. Yep. You came home on some jail shit. shit. Fuck everybody. 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 I just did 10 years of just staying for the real nigga niggas. in the world. Yeah, I'm the real nigga in the world. world. I'm going at all these niggas. Yeah. Jimmy getting bigger nails. <laughs> Cam getting slimmer nails. Yeah. 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 I'm chilling out. I'm chilling out. I'm chilling out. That was like, was that the wrong with that? It was like, it was something like that. It was something like Cam and then Jimmy getting bigger nails. Oh, he really said Cam. Yes. Damn, this nigga is wild out. This shit got to stop. This shit got to stop. But you know how it is, right? Because a lot of homies do that. You nah, know I know what is. he was doing. I know what he was doing. When a nigga come home from jail, though, Jim, you know, and niggas still got homies like that, that have come home right now, we grown ass men. Yeah, these niggas ain't real out here. Fuck all this. Right. Niggas. You're like, hold, dog, we ain't on that right. time. Right. Right. No, 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 no. Right. This is an era where niggas was on that time. This yeah. is an era where to be, the, to be the toughest about. nigga in the city was, was, was what niggas was aiming at. And for some reason, nigga. he was he was the he toughest was, nigga in the city. Nobody, nah, he said, I was the toughest nigga in the city. I'm just cool. I'm a cool guy. I'm a cool, calm collector. No, no, he wasn't cool, bro. You wasn't cool. You wasn't a cool nigga. This was the issue. This was, the, this was like, this nigga. This, uh, I'm not cool. Moving up. Me and you like this. But I'm saying back then, 
<laughs> when you niggas was walking in the clubs and we <laughs> pulled those over the, here. The, the Mexican standoffs. But and you was coming his through name. Huh? You said you started the shit, you man. You started this he, shit. He, he was chilling. I understand that, but I'm just saying. He's like, somewhere minding his business shit. Flex Jimmy. all on the end. <laughs> no, Jimmy man. Jimmy Gambino. Jimmy Gambino. Jimmy Gambino. <laughs> Cam getting slimmer now. <laughs> Hold up. What did he say? Take it back. Oh, my God. New York yeah. City. Did you hear this? Yeah. All that dumb shit. <laughs> Flex loving it. <laughs> and then. And then he told me, did you see me and you like this? Yo, of listen. course. Yo, what listen. You, what do you mean? I, I tell you what, though. When I first come home, right, I come I want, I want, come right out to the nightlife. Wasn't a lot of rappers out, out like that. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't see rappers all the time, but you would see Jim Jones. You would see him. And, and this is the difference when you knew niggas was outside and niggas was really active and all that. And you, you know, you're going to run into niggas. You're going to see niggas. You know what I'm saying? So, so why all the rappers, why you fuck with the niggas that was outside? <laughs> it's, it, 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 come on, my nigga. You just, said, a, you just said most you of the rappers were outside. Yeah. You could have said any of them niggas. He but, see Jimmy in the club. Why would I talk about a nigga that's not outside? You're like, nigga, you outside, I'm yeah, outside. Yeah, exactly. Because it would have been, yeah. it would have been safer. It would have been safer. <laughs> what are you talking about? It would have been a lot safer. Yeah, a he would have talked about all the niggas he going to bump yeah. into. But how did y'all squash that shit though? Um, in Atlanta, we had a we had a Mexican standoff. Oh, there you go. They got a New York to Atlanta. Oh, they were on a Mexican it. standoff tour. Our, <laughs> New York. That's the name of their tour. We know they tour. Our, the Mexican, Mexican standoff tour. Starring Jim Jones and Mano. I was coming up. Lobby we, boy. We was in, I was on an escalator. <laughs> They're the Mexican standoff. Mexican standoff. On an escalator. You look, he going up, you going That's down. That's a fact. That's a you like fact. This, nigga like this. <laughs> Bird. Yeah, listen. I was on the escalator going up. Lennox Small. Yep. Jim Jones had to had to have 30 niggas with him. He always got He was solo. Was you nah, solo? I wasn't solo. But I I, I I had, you know, my brother Eddie was there. We, it was a couple, maybe like four or five of us. You're solo. That's, yeah, that's eight niggas to it. <laughs> yeah, basically. And then I, I'm going up, and I seen these niggas going down, and they seen me, <laughs> and it was just like all them niggas. And I start counting, and I said, "Damn, it's a lot of niggas, right?" You start thinking. So I got to the top of the escalator. Some say, "Turn around." Them niggas was coming back up there. <laughs> you made a peace treaty. Did you no, do a no, peace treaty? Nah. Uh, nah, it wasn't that. They came up the top of the escalator and then kind of like walked to the side. And then when they walked to the side, they was just like grilling. Everybody was looking. You know what I mean? And then we had a couple words. What was right the words? There. Tell us the words. Jim, you know the words. You remember everything. Jim, no. What was the words? It, 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 it was... It, I, come to the mic, Jim. I can't remember the words. Come to the mic, that, Jim. I know that uh, AD and, and Sheik. And, and, and Melly was there. You no, know, Melly was there, but I'm talking about AD and Sheik. Sheik, was, Sheik is, yeah. is my OG. Yeah. Similar to how him and AD moved, right. but they knew each other very tight from being in the street. So at that point, they kind of intervened. Mm -hmm. They were saying what they were saying, and it was just somehow me and him was like, and we walked by ourselves. To like, I would think it was Bloomingdale's, well, what, right? What, I told my security. You say, Yo, that's, was like, somebody said, that's 212. So what the fuck did that mean? Yeah, they had a bunch of gangbangers with me. That mean roll on your ass. <laughs> nah, this, let's nah, talk that mean, about that it. That mean let's talk let's about talk. it. Let's oh, talk. All right. Let's 212. 212, that's Manhattan. You heard? Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah. But so we got a chance. To, me and him stepped to the side. Just me and him. And we just introduced ourselves. Yeah. That's a fact. We never told that story. Wait, well, that's wait, that, see, that sounds like they got into some gangster shit though. Like, what y'all? I mean, it was it, 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 it was opportunity for everything to happen, but for the mutual respect of the niggas that we yeah. fuck with, yeah, yeah. Have them two niggas right there, yeah. It, it, at that, I don't know what it did, but I just know that it prompted us to go to the side, and if it was gonna be some gangster shit, it was gonna be with just me and him, right? right. Talking to Mike right. and Jim. And when we got to the side, like Bloomingdale, like we told everybody stay outside. It was just me and him. Like we just going here, and we got inside, and we standing in front of each other. And it was a fact. We both introduced ourselves. That's a fact. Yeah. 
That's what's up, though, man. That's what's up. That shit could have went. In, that shit could have messed. Nah, it could have went anywhere. In New York Honeywell. City, Honeywell. in a club. That's some real shit. No, but in, this, this is in Lennox Mall. This in Atlantic. In, in Atlanta. Right. In Atlantic. But I would have lost, though. In the middle of the war. In the middle of the mall. I would have won. I would have lost. We would have lost. That's 30 on 5. They the might have tossed them tall. Yeah. Toss, been tossed main all into mm-hmm. the Gucci he, section. He'd have been, he'd, have been, he'd have been a chicken and waffle yeah. somewhere. For real. No, but it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy how you, niggas, how you meet some people. You so, can't fight 30 niggas. I don't give a fuck who he is. You mm-hmm. get punched all in from every angle. <laughs> but that's the base of our relationship. That's why we're so tight now because of how we met. Right, and uh-huh. it was all because Mano was st- starting shit. Yeah, yeah, he was doing some shit. <laughs> Fresh on from jail. Jail. I I, I oh, man, you know they gonna know who I am when I come on. And he had a video for that shit. No, too. no, I had no video. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, he had a video. No, he no, did the video, bro. No, 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 <laughs> Jimmy getting bigger now, like enough was enough now. Like, that was mean, what did that, that even mean show. though? It was something about it was something about Cam, Cam, and then I think that I'm bigger than Cam now, yeah, pertaining to that shit, shit like yeah, that. He said, "Oh no, you it fucking slick shit. You, want some you know, you talk slick from outside the room. Yeah. You don't really understand what's going on. And then sometimes when you, you know, the all the world tell you that. that and then from my perspective, I'm already on fire in the city. This is a, this is a different era. Mm-hmm. You had a nigga just came home, cool, because I got a bunch of Brooklyn niggas with me. And then you starting to hear his name, like, all right, all right. And then he's, I said, oh, I know what this nigga trying to do. Oh, he, try, he trying to take it to the street. He trying to get, <laughs> yeah. he trying to get, he trying to get the street championship. This was yeah. going on. Championship. Like, nah, 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 nah. He's trying the to get the street, he's trying to get the street chip. No, nah, hold no, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> You know, and you know he came right home with some straight jail shit. Fuck yeah. them, them Harlem niggas had it too long, son. He nah, it was it's, real, it's, son. We them niggas it's, had it too long, son. We bringing that shit back to Brooklyn. One, son. one thing I can say, he came home and made a statement for himself very quick. And I'm not just saying about saying my name. I'm just talking about period. When he got home, he made a hell of a statement. You heard? He, oh, he all got, right, what, what he was got the first his name across you made? very fast. I mean, we. I mean, this is not. I don't think this is the platform we uh, need to no talk more. about yeah, them yeah. statements that yeah. was made. But I'm just saying, from being in, from well, New York and coming home ago, man. and to make a name, he, he got known. busy. He, he came home busy. He, he, he came home, beat all the DJs up. Y'all gonna play my shit? Whoa! 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 Nah, they like yo. It's not the way you nah, do business. That's not the this way, the we way do I business. do business. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. This is what we doing. But remember, this is a different era. It's it ain't no Instagram. Yeah, it ain't no Twitter. Saying, it ain't none of this crazy shit that's going that's on. So the, thing, the things and the maneuvers you was able to get away with in that time, it was yeah. a little bit different than yeah. what you could try to pull off now. All right, let me ask you a question. That's the, who man is that right there? It's Flea. That's Flea. That's my cameraman. Oh, he know you though. He know me. Oh, he don't. He don't know you, man. Not know him. Oh, all right, no, because he it's over there, guy. he crying. He but he like he dying, laughing like he really start crying. Like everything I'm saying is true. <laughs> 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 he like, yeah, he just from know. the city, and he know, he know. He did when you from New York, you know he what's going on. Tears in his eyes. Like how the fuck you know this shit? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. No, but I'm saying, man, you know what you did 20 years ago. What any of us did 20 years ago when we was young niggas, man. man we did a lot, though. Man. Can't niggas be held accountable for that shit, man. Shit. Niggas was young. Niggas was aggressive. Shit. Some shit is forever. Niggas was trying to get on, man. Yeah. You know the dope I mean? thing about it is we could talk about things that happened 20 years ago and still be here and be relevant in 2022. And right. sitting with y'all, because I constantly hear y'all say y'all don't invite no old niggas up here unless they really like that. Not to say we old niggas who be yeah. timeless. <laughs> <You> timeless, <laughs> ageless, yeah. though. We threw that I'll be, the way, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be listening oh, to shit like that, you niggas. did. No, hell no. Oh, all three. Fuck you mean, y'all three. <laughs> nigga, you older than me. <laughs> fuck out of you, nut yes. ass nigga. This nigga's crazy. <laughs> don't throw me under the fucking bus. I'm going to say this, though. <laughs> But you age a dog is. <laughs> nah, you that ass that, yo, hey, you yo, that ass hey, nigga. yo, hey, <laughs> fuck yo, here. you niggas got me high right yeah, now. Y'all don't understand. Y'all just talking and smoking on me like y'all don't understand. Like, I'm he buzz. He buzz. Let me just buzz. ask you. Let me ask you a question, right? When you was your time, because we do a segment called Stories from the Cell. You know what I mean? And we, you know, stories he, from the cell. You know, and he always tells you know a, from the cell. A, a, something that happened in jail. You know what I mean? Like last week, he told about when he first got to jail, and it, this this stocky ass old head gripped him up from the back <laughs> and kissed him on his back, right? 
Type of shit, kick outs. He got his kick. Out. He throwing his leg. <laughs> he doing all type of dumb shit, holding the nigga, holding nigga waist area. He was the kid president of the Willie Boys. <laughs> the president of the Willie. Oh man, yeah, this is bad. Ass nigga. This is bad. Like but I'm sorry that happened to you, though, bro. I ain't. What? Ain't nothing happened to me? That's no, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah, that see. Man. Come on, man. That's bullshit. Ain't nothing happened to me. You told the nigga don't fight it. Nigga, say energy for making love. Nigga ain't tell me no shit like that. Baby boy, this nigga. I wanna made it out, nigga. Don't kiss him on his back. I wanna made it the fuck out, man. You would have been a Maytag in jail. You'd have been watching niggas draws, man. I swear. You'd have been watching niggas draws in jail. crazy, man. Fuck out of here. I don't even know. Why well, I ain't go, so we ain't going <laughs> to. You yeah. told on Tootie when y'all got locked up with weed, nigga. That's why you ain't go. How, how the fuck you get out before Tootie? These niggas is crazy. I'm trying crazy. to figure the fuck out of here, man. I don't know what's going He's on. He's another ass nigga, man. We, so, Yo. come on, man. Let, what, now, 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 who y'all got on the album? Shit, nigga. We got, um. Shit. I'm hot, nigga. Fab. Davies, Benny the Butcher, um, uh, Blue. He was young blue, young but blue. now he's blue. He's not um, young blue no more. He's just blue. He blue. He just blue right now. Young he's a bad May. motherfucker. Young and May. Um, Fabio. Five. We got a lot of up. Got, uh, Benny. Y'all got a hit lot of what? Oh, yeah, yeah. Styles definitely. P. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Y'all shooting a video for anything? Everything. Every fucking video. That's who content is king Put right that now. Shit out. Absolutely. We, we we everything we drop, we drop with a video. Oh, I see yo, I see you got the kitchen talk over there, Fox. Kitchen Hope. talk, yep, definitely. Making definitely. moves. Y'all making definitely. moves. Definitely. definitely. We did that with uh kit uh shit. See, I'm I'm bugging right now. Y'all niggas got me high. Yeah, we did a we did a deal with uh Fox So. Mm -hmm. So much shit going on there. We're gonna start the new season with them on um in August, I think. Niggas getting money. So, yeah, yeah. Y'all just get what happened to the what's name? Shout out to my man Ugly Nove, man. Studio, you remember we in quarantine. Oh, nice. Shout out to Noah. Shout out to Noah. Listen, man, he was. I, I, I got, I got. I think I might owe that man a check, man. There's so many things that happened since he brought me that, sent me that list about the, uh, the studio when everything was, was shutting down and um, trying to figure out how to step out the box and continue to make some money when they you shut all the you, venues and clubs down. It up and he sent me the the list to make the. And you had it turned up. <laughs> turned on up. quarantine. Started the quarantine studio. Your off of son, that. I remember your son was sitting there teaching. He learning the shit. You sitting there in the booth. He learning how to engineer and shit on the on the MacBook. I said, "Oh, this nigga ain't playing." Yeah, I did like seven albums during the pandemic. Who? Uh, What's your son named Hootie, right? Pooty. Pooty, right? Yeah. yeah. He was yeah. doing it? He was. She, yeah, he showed me how to do In the beginning, he showed me how to engineer and all I that I learned how to shit. engineer on the pandemic. I bought equipment and learned on engineer. I started my podcast on, on um quarantine. Yeah. You know, a lot of shit come out of despair. You know what I mean? Do it. Sometimes you got to. You're back gotta, against the wall, yeah, boy. Back, you got to figure some shit out. Because if that shit never would have came, then the opportunities right. that I was able to create for myself by the pandemic, I don't think I would ever would have thought about. And them shit is really. I'm glad that I wasn't got to get into that space. It was, you know what I mean? And we still here now and things like that off of a seas that we started when that's we right. didn't have nothing and shit like that. And that's uh, what I like about this time that we're in right now. This time that we live in right now is the greatest time because you can you can have so many different components. I can have a, a podcast, still have music, have a book, have this, have a show, yep. have all this other shit going on. 
in in not just being one box. He could he could he could do all the business that he could do, drop all the different albums, have different deals. Like it's just it's for me, it's it's probably the best time right now. Yeah, this, this is definitely dope. I'm back shaking. God bless you, heard. You gotta keep it moving. Like I said, when you can't stay motivated, stay consistent, and that that with that there, I just stayed on point. We running though. I got like six albums. I'm, I'm about to be on my third album. I dropped this year. Got like three more albums to drop this year, including the Spanish album. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Ole que pasa? Tranquilo, man. Jim Jones presents Ole que pasa? I see you over there shaking the building over there, Empire. Yeah, shouts to Empire, shouts to Gazi, shouts to Sam, shouts to Tef, shouts to Tina Davis, shouts to uh, Nima, shouts to the whole team over there. Definitely yeah. a beautiful situation. Some good people. Started maybe 10 years ago with Gazi, was a slim roster over there. He was like, he do distributions a little bit different than what Koch do, but it might could work for you. And right now, he got that shit on steroids. I mean, he figured out a loop that most of these major labels didn't, and that was how to... Uh, monetize them streams for the youngsters and create a digital uh, a digital distribution label and now he got a full running label and he's probably the biggest label in the game. So I tip my hat to him. He's helped me out tremendously. We going on a gold record or I think my record might be gold. I was they was looking at the numbers the other day for the trends record so it's looking pretty good. Shout we set the Empire. trends. Yeah. We up right now. Shouts mm -hmm. shouts to the Migos. I mean yeah. I don't know what's going on. But I'm glad I got my bucket my bucket list for uh for one of the things on my bucket list fulfilled and that's getting the whole record with the Migos. So shout out to them brothers for uh, assisting me on this gold record. That's what's up, man. Well hustlers gonna hustle, man. It's a fact. Hustlers so, gonna yeah, hustle. You know, that's the bottom line. Nigga ain't gonna sit around and wait for nothing Not to drop all. out the sky, man. Nothing Not jumping out of the sky. Yeah, it ain't man. gonna jump hustlers out the sky. Is gonna hustle. So when quarantine came around, you see what niggas did. They just made new, that's right, new opportunities, man. I'm nigga, we just, what y'all did? Y'all turned, y'all, y'all piped this whole shit up. You yeah, heard? we risked our life about that shit. <laughs> we, we, y'all turned this whole shit around. Out. Uh, you know, we risked our life because when everybody in the world was like, you can't see nobody, and you going be doing zooms. We was face to face with niggas. We was jumping like, on planes. We was in the we, middle we, of the pandemic. Like this, you sure you ain't got COVID, nigga? Come on, we out, nigga. Right, I got that on. shit three times. Turn the cameras on. Action. Yeah, niggas dying that shit and shit. Three times. That shit was crazy, man. We, we was Why willing. you stop rapping? What do you mean? That. It ain't work. He was doing shows at bars. <laughs> like, if you're doing, doing shows what? at bars, like, you doing shows at bars at night, with, like, you get booked at bars for 40s and shit. All right, let me get two forties and fifty dollars. Two forties. He he would he. My man, call, my, I called my man from Jason, man, because I got to pick his stuff. You know how the manager pick your back end. He right. go in there and get his money. It's two forties. Bring him out to the car. It's fifty dollars. Right. That nigga was rapping for beer and motherfucking a half a hundred, man. He's a fucking bum rapper. Joe Buttons is better than this nigga. Shout out to Joe, man. I told you, I'm holding it down, Joe. He's way better than Yo, that ass nigga. This is crazy. Bum ass rapper. It's cool. You claim the famous, yeah, that's us, and it was three other, five other <laughs> niggas on the album. I, yeah, yeah, let me tell you that. Let me tell you, I love that album though. Yeah, figures for life. I love that album. I was his manager from that. I, I was in jail, but y'all can't, y'all can't, y'all okay. can't fuck with the, the figures. figures. Right, right, nigga. Nigga. Maybe I'm going to have that album. I love that. <laughs> he just mad that when we was on tour, he was up to prison. You know, karaoke night. <laughs> I'm every woman. <laughs> fuck out of here, man. Me. Yeah, he karaoke over there. Yes, spot? he did. He hosted it. <laughs> you believe this shit, man? This man lying, man. First of all, you know all the jobs he had. Come on, man. Man. He was a prison in a lifeguard. He was a, he was a lifeguard in a prison shower. He lying, man. What? Yes. He lying. He was a captain you of the wrestling team. You was in no, the jail. Listen, I'm just trying to understand. No, but I'm saying you was in jail, jail man. I'm trying to get it, though. He was in jail. You lying to that man. He know that shit don't exist. <laughs> what? <laughs> he know a fucking life. Come now on. I don't know how I don't know how Pennsylvania got this shit. Right. Right. Yeah, Pennsylvania shit different. It could be different. He trying to put the spin on it, man. Pennsylvania shit different. Trust me. Doing some bullshit. And he was a pimp in jail. Pimping what? Yeah, he had hoes. You know better than that. Dog, nigga. Listen. No, that's wild. Listen. Nah, that's the wildest shit. Hey, hey, yo, 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 you know better than that. Everybody in jail. Dude, no, pimp no, man, you want some bullshit. Yeah. Yo, listen, listen to my dog. Yes, he had hoes. You never seen we a pimp in jail. Did you see a pimp in jail before? Yeah, he had Ricky Minaj. I seen a nigga with. Nah, I'm out. Yo, we ready? 
<laughs> you, are you ready now? We, yo, this, hey, yo, bro. Listen, hey, listen. Uh, I can uh, go now. Uh, uh, say, guys, see, they, Ricky it, Minaj. Yeah, yeah, Ricky it's crazy. Minaj. It's Ricky wow. Minaj. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> this, nigga, this nigga. Yo, this nah, is gross. Nah, this is crazy. You know better. You ever seen Pippin' Jim? Ricky Minaj and Beyonce is crazy. Nigga with the niggas, though. I, I ain't even tell you. I ain't even tell you. I don't know if he was doing it. I don't know what he was doing. I seen that was in that little circle. I don't know what's going on in that circle over there. See, see, see. Across bullshit. the yard, one nigga probably. Yo, what the fuck? I told you. I'm pushing niggas over there. See, huh? see, see. You got a pack of cigarettes? Huh? What the fuck is wrong with you? I bullshit. told you go up, go up to see Gallery and go fuck with that boy. I told you. He was a bullshit man. I don't know. Yeah, he was. He was. He got his money in that joint. Don't I ain't gonna lie. So, yeah, Jimmy was some fucked up shit. I'm not even by, saying that. By, 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 you believe this shit. By, 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 by any means, though, right, listen, my listen, nigga? Listen, listen, the third one was Lil' Him, not Lil' Kim. What? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It was Lil. All right. I'm just saying, man. Nah, 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 they penitentiaries. I was in right. most of penitentiaries. Then I was in some. Yeah, you know it's the difference. That was them. that. That specifically when he was pimping. That was of Dallas <laughs> to Pink Palace. Fuck out of here, man. You were some bullshit. All right, tell the you believe that bullshit. Oh, yeah. All right, let me ask you a question. Well, was you in the penitentiary that they called Dallas the Pink Palace? Yeah, I was there. All right, that's they all I'm saying. They call that jail. No, yes. you know it was a they little different. They call that jail Dallas the what? It the Pink Palace. Different. Why would a, they call it that, bro? It was a little <laughs> different shit. Man. No, I'm just trying to understand. Talk to me, man. No, what I'm saying understand is Understand me, man. Talk to me, bro. It was just some different shit, man. What was different? Was it Motherfuckers used to be laying in the lawn. What? And getting married in the yard and shit. Oh, it was nah, crazy. that ain't where I want to be. <laughs> yeah, but you know. We were just doing time. You did a lot of time there? We were just doing time. <laughs> <laughs> No shit, you time. did a lot of time there, though? Yes. No, I did a lot of time there. You did a dime there? I did a dime there. A dime, you did a dime in one prison? Yeah, one yeah. prison. Yeah, they keep... They, you could do long in Pennsylvania. You could be there for 30 till years. Until they found you with a cell phone. What about when you get in trouble, though? When you, no, I was chilling regular, man. I was in there. Oh. I mean, I was, you know... Chilling, man. I wasn't doing. I wasn't oh. doing too much. You was running around wilding out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. All that. Definitely. That's a fact. Yeah. No, he had, he had 11 yeah. jobs, so he stayed busy. He ain't never got no trouble. Jobs. Yeah, yeah, 11 jobs there. 11 I jobs. just told you. He hosts karaoke night. <laughs> Fuck out well, here, karaoke uh, night. But he, he was up there. He was on the knitting team. This nigga was nah. part of everything, bro. I'm trying nah. to tell you. This nigga be making shit up, man. Nigga's a liar, man. Right. So this none of this is true. Just listen, man. None of this is true. None of this is true. Bro. And, he, and behind all that, he was the chef up north. But but the, ask him that. Why would so, you believe it? The Pink Palace is true. That, That's true. That, but none of this other shit is oh, true. All right. Pink you listen to a nigga that said. You listen to a nigga that said he was the king of Philly and Will Smith won the Grammy. He never won shit. Mm. This nigga's a bum ass bootleg Z, Z League rapper. Yo, he he didn't Z do League? shit. He ain't do nothing. This nigga, listen. This nigga was rolling, rolling weed crazy. and carrying Lil Wayne bags. Major figure. No, no listen, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Just for the record, nigga. You. You go, go, don't, you, don't say nothing about major figures. No, 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 no. That was just a bunch of niggas. That wasn't just your shit. Just for the record, just for the record, that wasn't your shit. He you was the leader, you, though. You ain't hear me say I was the king of Philly, nigga. You heard Beanie Siegel say I was the king. You heard me Will Mill say I'm the king. Will you heard Freeway say I was Will the king. Will Smith ain't say he got a Grammy, nigga. You ain't get shit. You heard um, and every fucking body else, nigga. Fuck you talking about. What that mean? Nigga. Will Smith ain't saying it. And, and so I'm the Will Smith got a Grammy, nigga. I, I'm the king of Philly, and you the princess of Philly, nigga. <laughs> and Will is slapping you, dumbass. I got Will slapping you. I got Will slapping you. What hospital shit. gonna put Will fucking heads back on that? He slapped me. <laughs> Will slap what you, you talk fuck about? Out of you nigga, and I seen a nigga slap you, sock the rapper. shit out Y'all you. Y'all cousins, right? Yeah, it's yeah. my little cousin. Another ass cousin. I so when the major figures going, he was coming to see you. No, he made up major figures. I'm the fucking, I'm the founder. I was his first manager. You was the founder? Yeah, I told the nigga, come on. I put him. Sign this you was paper. rapping? Yeah, I used to be. Yeah. I was hot as nigga. I was hotter than all these niggas. He, really? Hotter than him? No, he was a boot leg rapper. Spado, I like Spado. Yeah, Spado the one who taught me how to rap. Y'all had a song on there, uh, P A O Day, the last song yeah. on there. That, I got a story about was, a Dutchie yeah. and Spado because you know them. They we signed. They up. was on. They was on entertainment. On entertainment. Yeah, yeah. So when we go on our, we go on our first tour, we had to take the tour bus to Miami, and the nigga Dutch was like, "Yo." I'm about to take this 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 lean like lean. I'm about to take this this syrup. Like, what did you talk about? Like, yo, if I fall asleep 
and I don't wake up, don't worry about it. I'll be good when we get to Miami. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not dead. I'm like, what the fuck is me looking at? What the fuck is this nigga talking about? Sure enough, that nigga died. And did wake up for the 18 hours we drove to Miami and woke up like nothing happened. Like, yeah, I'm ready for Miami. Like, what the fuck? He drank a bottle of syrup. They ain't had syrup in New York at that time? Nah, they never had syrup in New York. It's something that's brand new within yeah. the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. always had yeah. that. We always drinking that West shit. We was talking about that shit. But that was the first person about in, that in, shit. in 97 or 98. In 98. Yeah, yeah that shit since the early 90s. We was drinking that shit. Yeah, you was smoking wet and everything. You didn't do anything. <laughs> that nigga just smoked R&Bs. You know that, right? What the fuck is that? Rocks in the bag. Whoa. So he, because his whole thing was, he just yo, was like. Yo, yo. No, he was wilding, man. Why y'all be playing yeah, like this, bro? Yo, listen, like, this listen. Crazy, he was wilding. But y'all, y'all see, the, 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 the ill thing about Philly and New York is yeah, we close, but we totally different. Yeah, because he smoked, he smoked Rambos. Rambos? That's everything. Rambos? That's weed, dope, wet. He dipped that's the joint like at the end. That's like a big flurry. Wait, no. They call Wait, that shit it, Listen, as soon as he do it, it don't be no music. It don't be no speakers and nothing around. As soon as he do that joint, he hit it. You just hear, I can feel it. <laughs> that nigga go, he be somebody else. You wouldn't fuck with him if he was. No, that's my cousin. You, I just had to help him get through it, man. You got him through it, though. Just splash the water on him, wake him up. Throw him, <laughs> throw him in the, feed him the milk. Here, wake drink him this milk, up. cuz. Get wake up. him up. Slap him. Come on, cuz. Get it together. <laughs> you got to go home. All that dumb shit. Wake him up. Yeah, man. That niggas talk funny. Splash. Splash him and all that shit, man. He had a wild life. The rap shit didn't, that so shit, it fucked him up a little that bit. That shit had niggas trying to hold whole buildings up in my yep. hood. He's a strip out. Yeah, come here, call your, your cousin. He down here naked. He'd take his clothes off, fold it, sit, sit right there on the fire hydrant. I'm like, yo, cuz, what the fuck? I got to take the towel, this get him back wild. home. That nigga was wild. So you really was the you the first figure. You I started the, the name. Major figures. Major figures. I started the name in Nanny Basement, our grandma basement. And I wound up getting pinched. Right, so now when you got locked up, so before you got locked up, was all the members together? All no, y'all it was together? just me and him. It was just me and him. Spade was my man. I, I didn't really rap like that. Spade was my oh, man. You was, was the rapper. Yeah, he yeah, was a he rapper. he was playing. He was going to some basketball. Some, some, uh, he got a little a punk-ass scholarship to some no-name college. Around. It's a local joint. No-name college. And <laughs> what happened joint. was, yeah, it was a local joint. It don't really matter. He thought he was going to go to the league. I said, nigga, come on, man. Get this mic. Come on, grab this mic. Right. You're going to be an MC, nigga. <laughs> And we come on, we going to the studio. I took him to the studio. Right. I said, before we do anything, sign this joint. He said, What's this for? I said, We gotta sign this like for all of studio equipment. He signed it was he don't even know it was a, it was publishing and anything. <laughs> he signed his publishing over his life and I was managing. So I used, right. to, I used to tell him, he don't remember. I used to tell him, Y'all know this joint. He's like, listen, we gotta do this little show. This damn Jerry Bowles wanted to come through. It's a free joint. He like, all right, bet. He don't even dig. I'm, I'm getting all the money. I'm the manager. He don't even dig. You know how the managers run running on the niggas when they first coming in the game. He like, bet, cuz we had doing, I got to be doing block parties, all that type of shit. And you know, it was just, I went to jail, then Spade came, and then. But y'all knew, all knew each all other? Of, yeah, we all knew each other. Lava, everybody. Yeah. He just got caught. He, he, they, they tripped him. He fell. He took a cuz, go up. They got us. Oh, they they got got us. us. What? <laughs> he, he like, he like, <laughs> they, they got us. He lied on me, man. <laughs> he tried to get me to go down with him. They got us. <laughs> <laughs> he lied on me. That nigga lied, man. So you took, you took over the major figures. Yeah, I left, I left it to him. Go ahead, handle that. <laughs> what? No, he went to jail. Did he? Look, he was sitting in his cell one day, and our TV, uh, our video came on TV. He cried Wait, like a I, motherfucker. I don't know when to even. Take no, some of on some real shit. Or, or, I'm or, in the cell, like, right? I don't, I don't, right. I don't, this one, what's the name? Was on Sita. You remember the, the cartoon lady yeah. was on? So I'm in the cell. I come in from New York. I'm watching this shit. That shit came on. Yeah, that's us. I go on the block and tell, yo, this is my shit right here. Niggas like, wow, get the fuck out of here. Niggas <laughs> in jail. You sit, sit down somewhere, wow. I'm like, no, this is my shit. That's my, this, you know, this is my group. I started this shit. You know what I mean? They work for me. Niggas like, man, get the fuck out of here. Them niggas ain't. It was crazy to be seeing motherfucking. Uh, you remember in the source where they had an up next joint, right. big sex, and they had the big sex, and I'm like, oh shit. I'm looking at me down. I was like, this shit going down, man. And it, you know, it was on, man. You cried. No, I dropped a couple tears a couple times because it was like, damn, to see some to be in the ghetto and see some shit that you was a part of go, and you sitting in the motherfucking can, it was it was it was a happiness, the fact that I was right. a part of something that really was that right. went beyond the hood. Right. See. A lot of times we just celebrate shit that's in the hood, local shit. Right. Nigga, you gonna go local or you gonna go global. So now I'm like, man, I'm touching, I'm connected to some shit that's, that got that's outside right. of not that's, just the neighborhood, right. the city. And you know was, what I mean? And, you, and we had never seen nothing like that. Yeah, I ain't never seen no shit like that right. from my perspective. And I think a lot of times we be so focused on uh, that neighborhood shit that we be stars in the basement 
that we intimidated by the first floor. Mm. Motherfucker be so much. You be and motherfucker. You know how it is. You you. We all know how it is. We got a homie or a nigga to get money, doing whatever. That nigga do a. He could do anything in the city. Do anything in the hood. You take that nigga on the plane. Soon as he land, that nigga freeze. That nigga freeze like motherfucking water in the freezer. That nigga. <clears throat> He don't know how to get at the bench. You know how that shit go? Mm -hmm. It's easy to perform. It's easy to be that nigga where you're from. But you that nigga when you that nigga everywhere. Right. And a lot of people can't do that, man. So when you seen that video. I knew I was that nigga. But did that inspire you? To yeah. like to like No, that's when it. I started sending you raps and some more songs. So you still was rapping back then. Yeah. yeah. I used to rap in the yard. Yeah. But I used to send he him was little a three joints. time three time state champion at the prison talent show. Fucking lie. That lying over. So I ain't never got no fucking talent show, you nut ass Good. nigga. I used to rap in the yard, boy had a keyboard and shit, so I used to spit back then. You know what I mean? Good. Fuck Good. out of here. You had the keyboard rapping? No, somebody else just see just like He tried to slide some yeah, shit. Yeah. I'm he was trying one of them understand. niggas. He was one of them nut ass niggas walk up on you. <laughs> I hate them. Like, got Gucci like, on one. you do. Yeah. You got a jumpsuit on, pussy. You ain't got no Gucci on. Shut the fuck up. He's a don't fucking hater, sale, man. You know? He's a hater because his career was short, man. That's <laughs> cool. You rain on, you rain on listen, the top was listen, cut like listen, short what, like leprechauns. I nigga. knew rapping one for you when he first came home this time because he, he lied. He, he, I said, let me hear something. He, he lied. Start beating on his chest. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here to do shit like what? that. But I just came home. You lying ass nigga. And he got to do all the beats. He could do balling on his chest. <laughs> this nigga work easy. But then listen, he came home right. Well, you know how niggas be locked up too long because all of they raps be jail raps. He, can, he got a whole joint about. You came home trying to rap? No, he lied on me. That nigga lied on me. No, it's all right, though. That nigga is lying to you. You high. Nah, I'm Because you with the bullshit, man. You keep co-signing this bullshit. You co-signing this bullshit. You put a battery in this nigga back. You Yeah. He had living the bullshit. tell him keep it real. He ain't know what he was going to do at first. He came home. He lied. That nigga lied on me, I said, cuz. You lying, cuz. You still, you still was rapping. Man, like, I, you know, just, just, just on some real shit. Like, let me hear some shit. You know, she was up there writing some shit. Right? That nigga lying. Everything was about G. <laughs> this nigga lying, Jeff. This nigga Niggas lying. getting stabbed. You know? <laughs> he lying. Yo, that nigga man. lying on me, man. I swear this you lying, oh cuz. Nah, that's Who going to buy this shit? Yo, <laughs> man. That nigga lying on me. But every time he did a song, he played a different beat on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's high, man. He is high. I guess we all have now. That nigga high. Nah, but listen, though. I got a... <laughs> I know. had a whole album with I, production and anything <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> See, like, you was, he was fuck shit. He is like this. He keep telling listen, me. He keep oh, listen. <laughs> you like, for example, she had do one song. Yeah, that's called Turn Up, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro, yo. No, yeah. Yeah. Yo, 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 try, yo, 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 so then, so then he, started, he started hitting that shit. When I get free, I'm going to go here. When I get free, I'm going to do this. When I get free, I'm going to have five bad bitches in Miami. When I get free, I'm going to... But the whole song was like 35 minutes straight. Oh, all this shit he was going to Who the fuck got a song 35 minutes straight? This nigga lying on me, man. It's too hot for this shit, man. No, no, for real, though. For real, though. Believe this he, shit, he wants some bullshit. But you gave up your rap shit. Yeah. All right. Spit, just spit four bars of when I, I get free. I ain't got no rap. Just so they can understand it. I don't know Please, what Please, this going to be the you bed. Lying. Please. No, you lying. Please, just, you lying just four me, bars of when I get free. You lying on me right just now. please. You lying, man. Please, do it for the real, no, some man. real niggas, man. No, man. <laughs> he wants some bullshit. Come on, man. He really wants some bullshit. Just four bars. Got, you no, do. I never beat on my chest. <laughs> you lying on me, man. Oh, you ain't got to beat on your chest on the table. That's shit. You never got to beat on your chest on the table. That's a plan of eight shit. Just four you bars. Just four bars. You smoked a dipper. Just four bars. You smoked a dipper, man. Just four bars. Come on, man. You lying on me. I did that to my lying on me, man. This nigga's a fart. I can't do this, bro. Word of mother. Please, this nigga please, high, and you high, man. Bars. You got Mano high. I'm high. Four bars please, when I get free. Mano go to shit. Contact. I ain't attacking this shit, bro. These Listen, man. Lobby boys, man. Lobby boys. Go tap into it, man. You know what's going on, man. Kitchen yes, Talk sir. Podcast, man, That's on right. Fox. So I don't know what's going on. This boy right here. He's listen, man. 
Nothing's one day I'm going to get him to spit what I'll get he free. He ain't got nothing going on. Bullshit rapper. <laughs> Joe Buttons was better than this nigga, That's man. That's cool. He was. Joe I'm Buttons a better podcaster high. than Joe, so no, me no, even. But if you, did, if you 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 did, used to <laughs> rap. Why you can't spit full balls? No, that was back right. in the day, man. Please. Please. Right. You started please, major cuss. figures, I'll put my man. Up. Please, yeah, I'll put my you started please. major figures. You please. still, you, no. you still know please. how to rap. Kick one of the old no, ones. No, no, yeah. What was your please. major please. figure? Please, Nobody cuss. Nobody's gonna hold that against you. Not good niggas gonna hold that against you. Just full balls. This is what the please, cuz. Yeah, you're in the lobby. Please, cuz. For the lobby boys, one time. I retire. Put my cleats up. Just full bars. I ain't got no full bars. When I get free, what was the first bar? When I get free, what? Shut the fuck out of here. What's this? I'm in bar. Miami with bad bitches. No, that was the first bar. You lying, man. Bar? What was the first bar? Just just please, because no, no. you don't, you don't never be bitching like that. No, I, told, I was telling him songs. This is when I was in jail. I used to rap. Yeah. I wasn't rapping when I was on the streets. No, 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 so so tell us what, what you what, what jail you get free. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's a jail, jail rap. It's a jail rap. When I get free, I'm going to jump on the water bed. nigga that's going outside in the rain telling people, listen, listen. This is what I said. Hold up. This is what I said. When I get free, Maserati with the platinum pipes. That's all I remember. No, let's see, he well, lied. What happened to the beat, though? He lied. Come on, dog. That sounds like spoken oh, word. Oh, that's what I said. When I get free, Maserati with the platinum pipes. Calico nigga with the lime green fluorescent lights. When I get free. I forget the, I forget the rest. Yeah, of when I get free. Again. free. Yeah, it was some shit like when that. I, yeah. I was in jail, though. Yeah, yeah when I get free, I'm going to be on the water bed getting head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you see? That. Yeah, he wrote a joint like <laughs> that, too. That. I never, <laughs> never had a joint like that, no. See, he had a joint. <laughs> you had a jail rat. Yeah, he had, had a bunch jail of jail rats. And he was in the, in the yard like this. Never. Yes, he was. Never. You know, he came home, he was stocky. This, this he, was one of them he was one of them niggas his last six months. I'm going home. No, this, this, this nigga did 11,000 no, miles. No, he was just jumps. I'm on my way home. Yeah, you know he, he had, had to do one listen, arm joint. Uh, he had the sound effects with his joint. <laughs> that's, that's how his joint. Yo, let me tell you though. I'm, no, 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 no. Let me tell that's you how why. you was. I was never one of them niggas. I already had a. <laughs> never one of them niggas. I already had a complex about being one of them niggas. You good. Because in my mind, it was like, I ain't a rapper. Right, because I started rapping in prison. I never rapped in my life. Oh, I never rapped in my life. But you came home. I and started rapping in prison in jail in the box. Twenty three hours shoe shoe program. Twenty three hours a day. I never I never thought about rapping. None none of that. I started doing that just to pass the time. Like the days in the box. Because what you doing in the box? You, you locked in. You ain't doing much. Right. So. When I got out the box, I never, I, ne I didn't have the confidence to walk around and start rapping for niggas. I would rap for niggas privately, cause I didn't look at myself as a rapper. I didn't think that I was gonna be like a rapper because I never was a rapper. So, and, and this is at a time it wasn't always fashionable to be a rapper. So I was like, I'm a gangster nigga. I ain't with all that. I'm not one of these niggas gonna be in the yard rapping and looking like the motherfucking entertainment nigga. I, that ain't me. We ain't gonna be beating on these tables and beats on the, <laughs> none of that. So I would, I would come pull a nigga. That I was real cool with and be like, yo, you know how I'll be rapping. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so you would have said Wallow when you your mother said. Oh, so basically what he said I'll is. Pull, I'll pull a nigga. He'll pull Wallow with a cell beat on your chest, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I got this new shit, son. Where's the mother, son? Get on your chest, Wallow. Oh, this nigga was some bullshit, nah, man. Oh, bro. Yo, nah, yo, 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 basically yeah, what he yo, said yo, is Wallow would have been his producer in jail. my producer. And he would have been up there fucking it up on the island. Wallow would have been my producer is nah, crazy this, this nigga is crazy, crazy man this is a crazy ending like I don't yeah. know where we just went this nigga it's, crazy right here this is crazy man but when you came home you had the heart to rap well, you had the heart it. to I start with it. niggas right, I, but I Jimmy getting bigger huh. Cam getting smaller <laughs> money getting yeah. taller money yeah. getting taller like yeah, you just came on with some whole dumb shit I looked at it from <laughs> on some hustling shit like nigga we gonna we could do this I'm selling it to my guys like Hey, everybody getting money, so when I get back, you know, we're going to do this. So I was looking at it from a standpoint, like, we're going to have our own shit, you know, hustle hard. I came up with that in prison. When I come out, you know, this is what we're doing. We're going to get in the game. We gonna, I'm going to rap. I ain't got to be the best rapper. We're going to hustle our way there. This is how I was looking at it. So that was my <coughs> mind state from the door, really. Oh, okay. Well, shit, man. Lobby boys, man. Make Lobby sure boys. you go get that. Go get that. Yeah. that. This is out. This your new brand. Yeah, that's that knockout. It's that knockout by yeah, by, by medicine and high tolerance. Mm. Yeah, that is a. You got anything else you selling, man? <laughs> Clothes, yeah. I mean, it should be into a lot of things: fitness, television. 
Shout out, out to Fit, fit Lit. Yeah, I'll be seeing you these Fit years. Lit. That nigga too strong now. Jimmy, where you trying to take this shit to? I'm just Television. Trying to, the, you trying to be one of them niggas on that squat behind them, man? You, you squatted nah, 1,500 I'm one just, day. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah! He's like, this is Joe. Yeah! I'm like, damn, Jim, what the fuck is he doing? Screaming. You know that. You know Jim, he's not thinking he's in the yard. Yeah! Get him! Nick! Nick! I'm like, fuck hey, is Jim doing? I knew, I knew he on Jim. Instagram. Uh, uh, he walked hey, all up to the joke. Hey, I knew Jim was serious. One day I seen him throw powder in his yeah. hands. And <laughs> like LeBron James and shit on the bench press. I said, what the fuck? Jim be squatting all types. This nigga's too strong. No, this nigga got powder in the gym on the bench man. press. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy and then Jim yeah, just being there for no reason now. Jim, yeah. where, where are you going at with it, Jim? <laughs> like, the goal shaped. is to lift you, to be able to lift your woman in the air and eat the box <laughs> in the air. It. Come here, stop playing. Spin around. Like, what are you, what are you trying to do? Jim and then just... Next thing gonna be in there doing no, you gotta do one one finger pull ups. One finger pull ups. Yeah, he in there on some yeah, shit. Yeah, you niggas can't do one finger pull ups, you ain't shit. <laughs> like like we you try to quit with this shit, Jimmy. No, nah, man. I'm just huh? trying to stay in shape as we get older, man. It's like the founder of you for them. Yeah. And then he wanna remind all the old niggas they ain't working out. <laughs> I did back day just in case you did. <laughs> just what the fuck? Did. I did it for you. That's the fuck fact. I didn't do yeah. back day to that. I didn't do shit but <laughs> smoke <laughs> weed, nigga, arms, but you ain't got case. to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> he out there all of the Garage, just I day. Did, I did leg day, leg just in day. case you niggas didn't. Piggy like, ring day, <laughs> right, right. Like Jimmy, man, you just you living too much, man. God damn, man. Now he got made. He done talked Mado when it coming. Mado yeah, came home. Are. He came home with the prison stock. You know one of them niggas. Yeah. If he on the streets, he ain't really lifting. He just wake up, do a hundred push ups every yep. day. And dip he, out. Now he got him in the gym. They, they done got a uh, fab in the yeah, motherfucking yeah, gym. Yeah, they get it. I don't know no, what type there. of speeches they giving out over there. Yeah, they got they fab in the fucking gym. They on some motor. What you doing? Get up. You playing? <laughs> they using my shit over there. But Davies. I what's up, man. Shout out Davies, to too, yeah, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, everybody, we all in the gym. Fit lit. That's yeah, all us together. Shout out to Enough Set. I got an artist that I work with out here in Philly. Kid is dope. Shout out to yeah, Nuff said. Shout out to said. Shout out to old niggas yeah, that's said fit, be talking man. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the, all the old fit niggas, man. Shout yeah, out to I mean. all the old fit niggas. Real, real talk. There's a lot of niggas built like bad guys banging up against a tree, man. A bad boy. <laughs> this <laughs> nigga's crazy, yeah. man. A Before we get out of here, I just want to give you your flowers, man. I'm proud to see the brothers like y'all get to the bag. Appreciate doing that, what bro. you're doing. Staying yeah. in the element. Staying as nut as, nut, as, nut as y'all want to and shit like that. It's, it feels good because y'all ain't got to change for nothing, so. Keep doing what you're doing. There's a lot of people watching, and, and you're leading by example. Not saying that you need to be a role model, but you're doing some fly shit that be, a lot of kids can follow after and, and get to a bag. So keep doing what you do. Appreciate you, Jimmy, man. man. And uh, we appreciate y'all for sliding lobby through, man. Sitting yeah. on the couch, lobby. man. Lobby boys, get man. Get to talk lobby. podcast. Five yeah. Show them some love. And it's yeah. just like that. Right.